from the industry that has a special place in my heart, like uh, Senator Robin Padilla. Maraming salamat din po sa mga kasama natin sa iba't ibang uh, ahensya ng pamalaan na nagbibigay ng suporta sa industriya ng news, media, at pelikulang Pilipino. Today, we will discuss the measures that seek to provide protection to the workers in the media and entertainment industry. This first cluster of the bills that we will take up is the proposed Eddie Garcia Act, which focuses on ensuring the implementation of occupational safety and health standards for the workers. Another cluster is the Media and Entertainment Workers Welfare Act that intends to protect the rights of the workers and provide them with adequate pay and social benefits, among others. Also included in our agenda today, the status report on the implementation of Republic Act Number 10361, where Batas Kasambahay, which was enacted into law exactly 10 years ago. Nais po natin marinig ang ulat ng uh, Dole tungkol dito, kasama na rin mga datos mula sa Philippine National Police or PNP. Sa so, inyong tulong, tiyak na magiging makabuluhan ng talakay ng ating committee ngayong araw na ito. Before we proceed, let us first acknowledge the presence of the members of the committee, namely Senator Robin Hood Padilla, who is the Chairman of the Committee on Public Information, and Senator Rafi Tulfo. And with the presence of our colleagues, we declare the presence of a quorum. May we ask our committee secretary to read into re the records the items that are included in today's agenda and to acknowledge our resource persons present here today. Um, sec. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Vice Chairman and the Chair of the Committee on Public Information and Mass Media. Our agenda for today are the following. Uh, measures providing for occupational safety and health standards for workers and talents in the movie and television industry. Otherwise, otherwise known as the Eddie Garcia Law, Senate Bill Number Four Five Zero, introduced by Senator Padilla, Senate Bill Number Four Six Zero, introduced by Senator Strada, Senate Bill Number One Eight Eight Nine, introduced by Senator Lapid, taking into consideration House Bill Number One Two Seven Zero, introduced by Representatives Villaferte, Ribata, and Ciso Romero et al. The second agenda is the measures providing for enhanced protection, security, and benefits for media and entertainment workers, otherwise known as the Media Workers Welfare Act. Senate Bill Number 461, introduced by Senator Strada. Senate Bill Number 496, introduced by Senator Ligarda. Senate Bill Number 1183, introduced by Senator Go. Senate Bill Number 1577. Introduced by Senator Revilla. Senate Bill Number 1693, introduced by Senator Tulfo. Senator, Senate Bill Number 1765, introduced by Senator Lapid, taking into consideration House Bill Number 454, introduced by Representative Soriano, Yap Duterte, Yap Bongalan, et al. Third on the agenda is a report on the status of implementation of Public Act Number 10361, otherwise known as Batas Kasambahay. For the record, Mr. Chair, the following resource persons are here physically. From the Department of Labor and Employment, Under Secretary Benjo Santos Benavides, together with Ms. Carol Resurrection and Director Alvin Corrada. From the Employees Compensation Commission, Executive Director Raima Via Velasquez. From the Presidential Communications Office, Under Secretary Honey Rose Mercado. Yes, Mercado. Okay. Together with Assistant Secretary Eugene Henry Rodriguez and Executive Director Paulino Gutierrez. From the Pag Ibig Fund, Attorney Jose Roberto Po. From the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth, Mr. Rex, Fort, Rex Paul Ricotter, together with Mr. Georgit Mislang. Okay. From the Social Security System, Mr. Carlo Villagorta. From the Civil Service Commission, Attorney Romulo Concha, Jr. 
from the Philippine Commission on Women, Attorney K. Ann Magundaya of Borlado, from the Film Development Council of the Philippines, we have the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Tirso Cruz III, and the Executive Director, Daniel David Morales. From the National Press Club, Mr. Lionel Abazola, Secretary. From the National Union of Journalists of the Philippines, Mr. Jonathan De Santos, Chairman. From the Photojournalist Center of the Philippines, Mr. Jimmy, Jimmy Domingo, Chairperson. From the Center for Community Journalism and Development, Executive Director Victor Redmond Red Batario. From the Publishers Association of the Philippines, Mr. Nelson Santos, President. From GMA Network Incorporated, Mr. Fidel Asuncion, Labor Relations Manager. Mr. Asuncion. Together with Attorney Angelo Giocno. From ABS-CBN Corporation, Attorney Maria Cherry, Sherry Cruz. Together with Mr. Lodovico Bungubung Jr. From Reina Films. The President and Film Director, Mr. Carlito Siguion Reyna. From the Movie Workers Welfare Foundation Incorporated or Mowell Fund, we have the Chairperson and Trustee, Ms. Maria Elisa Boots Anson Roa Rodrigo. Together with the President and CEO, Mr. Res S. Cortez. From the Kapisanan, ng from the Film Academy of the Philippines, Mr. Manny Morfe, Director General. From the Kapisanan ng mga Artistang Pilipino, sa Pelikula, Internet at Television, Ms. Mafi Carion. From the Philippine, from, act, no, no, from Actor, League of Filipino Actors, Ms. Dolly De Leon, Actor, Membership, Representative, and Spokesperson. And Ms. Isa Calzado Huntley, Board of Directors. From the Philippine Theater Actors Guild, or TAG Philippines, uh, Ms. Titin Villanueva. From the Directors Guild of the Philippines, Mr. Mark Mealy, President. From the Philippine Motion Pictures Producers Association, we have the President and CEO. Uh, Mr. Vincent Del Rosario. Uh, together with Attorney Josephette Alonso and Mr. Percival Intalan. Uh, can we ask uh, uh, Mr. Vincent Del Rosario to we'll just provide a seat later so that you can take a seat. From the Production Designers Circle of the Philippines, Mr. Iro Ives, Ives Francisco. Okay. From, from the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, Mr. Carlos Miguel Oñate. From the Kilisong Mayo Uno, Mr. Jerome Adonis. Also, Mr. Chairman, the following uh, the following organizations oh, from the Philippine National Police, Police Colonel Portia Manalad, together with Police Major Eduardo Untalan II. From the Association of Licensed Private Employment Association of the, of the Philippines, or ALPEA, Ms. Grace Season, Season Fortuno, President, Ms. Virginia Castillo, Vice President, Ms. Jocelyn Ramos, the Vice President, and also Ms. Fe Parina, Ms. Emerita Kawile, and Ms. Michelle Barinan. From the Association of uh, Manpower Agency for Domestic Household Workers, Attorney Raymond Ramos. Okay. From the United Domestic Workers of the Philippines, the Association of Domestic Household Workers, Ms. Adriana Kimpo Chu. And Ms. Grace Estrada. 
the following, Mr. Chairman, the following agencies have also submitted their position papers and presentation. The Department of Labor and Employment, the Social Security System, the Pag-ibig Fund, and PhilHealth. That is all. Thank, thank you uh, to our committee secretary. Before I, uh, before we proceed and before I give my opening remarks, I would like to yield the floor to Senator Tulfo for him to deliver his opening remarks. Senator Tulfo, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, um, and Senator Robin Padilla, Maganda Umaga, Senator Jingo Estrada, Mr. Chair, thank you again. Um, ako po ay uh, dating miembro ng media for so many years, sa PTB4 to be exact. At nakita ko po during those years kung gaano kahirap ang maging isang reporter and kasama ko po yung aking cameraman and driver. Hindi po madali. Wala pong holiday, wala pong weekend. Umulan man, uminit, kailangan maghanap ng istorya. Nagahabol ng istorya palagi. Nagahabol ng deadline. Kahit pa anong panahong meron, masama man o maayos, we have to be out there to inform and educate people. And sa maraming pagkakataon, kung saan kami abutan ng gutom, kung ano meron makakain dyan sa tabi, sa karindiriya, kakainin namin, naranasan ko rin po na nagkasakit because hindi po yung tamang pagkain na kain ko po sa kanto-kanto sa paghanap ng istorya. Why am I saying this? Because ngayon, ako po ay nasa Senado na. Alam ko po yung karanasan, ang hirap na dinaranas ng mga taga-media, especially field reporters and cameramen. I'm here to make sure na mabigyan sila ng ustisya, especially po yung mga talent. Wala pong tamang pasweldo, walang binipisyo, walang holiday pay, walang overtime pay, walang security of tenure, at any time pwedeng masiba. Walang 13-month pay. Well, of course, may mga kumpanya na nagbibigyan ng 13-month pay. At naranasan ko noon, ang aming 13-month pay ay mga juice na regalo ng mga sponsor. Totoo po yan, tinapay. Na yung tinapay ay parang inaagnas pa. Tasty. Ganon kahirap po ang maging reporter, cameraman, assistant cameraman, etc. Hindi po commensurate yung mga effort na they put in doon sa katilang mga trabahong ginagawa para sa mga Pilipino. Now, marami akong alam ng mga taga-media dahil walang benefits. Kapag nagkakit, natunogan ng mga politiko, mga politiko ay nagbo-volunteer, natulungan sila. Kung ano yung mga pangangailangan nila medical, tutulungan sila. Pag sila ay namatayan, Sasagutin ng pamburol, sasagutin lahat. Now, anong implications po nito? Well then, yung media naman na tinulungan ng mga politiko for so many times because they were not properly paid and they were not being taken care of, they become a beholden doon po sa mga politiko tulong sa kanila. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, ito pong mga media man na natulungan ng mga politiko then nagiging bias na po sila. Hindi na po naging accurate ang kanilang reporting. Kahit pa may mali yung politiko na kailangan i-expose, ilabas, kagat labi, pikit mata, medyo yung istorya na babago dahil may utang na nga sa politiko. And this has to stop. Kailangan lahat ng membro ng media mabigyan po na maayos na compensation Wala na po dapat talent. Dapat lahat ay regular. Tamang pasahod. Minimum wage, of course. All time pay, health benefits, life insurance, etc. Only then, if we will make this to happen, 
Maasahan po ninyo ang pagsisilbi ng maayos ng lahat ng member nating media and we can call them doing an excellent job. So, Mr. Chair, magtulong-tulungan po tayo rito na para mailagay sa ayos na ang sitwasyon ng ating mga taga-media. Maraming salamat at magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Rafi Tulfo. Katulad ng uh, nabanggit ko po kanina, malapit po sa aking puso ang uh, industry na tatalakay natin ngayon. Alam naman po ninyo ang aking ama, si dating Pagulong Joseph Estrada, ay isa sa mga masugid na nagtaguyod ng pelikulong Pilipino kung saan siya nakilala bilang uh, ERAP. In 1974, he established the Movie Workers Welfare Foundation or Moral Fund to give support to our workers in the film industry. Ang Moral Fund po ay nagbibigay sa kala ng tulong pinansyal, medikal at pabahay. At tulad din po ng adhikain ng aking putiing ama, personal ko rin layunin na tulungan ang ating mga kasama sa industriya ng pelikulang Pilipino, telebisyon at radyo. Kasama din ito ang pagsisipan. Siguro na kanilang kalusugan at kaligtasan ng pangyawakan na sa kunasa. O kaya dahil the untalented actors, Mr. Eddie Garcia, in 2019 can be and should be prevented. With our mandate as legislators, we can definitely do more. Kung nasimulan po ng mga ulfan na ganitong initiative, walang duda na kaya itong ipatupad na mga hensya ng ating pamalaan sa tulong ng mga kasama natin sa industriya. The bills in our agenda today will not ensure the rights, will not only ensure the rights and welfare of the workers in the movie, TV, radio, and entertainment industry are upheld and protected. They also seek to provide guidelines to ensure their health and safety. The proposed measures filed in the honor of Mr. Eddie Garcia expressed the objective of this chamber to ensure that no life will be lost again due to negligence or, is, or irresponsibility. We hope that with your expertise and experiences, we will be able to craft a law that will benefit all the stakeholders in, in the movie industry. Maasa po tayo na sa pamagitan ng pagtatagoy ng karapatan at benefit ng makasama natin sa industriya ay muli ito magiging masigla at, at produktibo. Uh, Senator Robin Hood, you have a uh, state, opening statement. Uh, maraming salamat po sa ating uh, idolo ng masa. Uh, Senator Jingo Estrada, wala naman po ako masyadong mahaba pang sasabihin dahil napakaganda na po ng inyong uh, talumpati ni Senator Rafi Tulfo. Gusto ko lamang pong batiin, pasensya na kayo dahil ako'y tagahanga eh. Gusto ko lamang batiin ang mga artistang hinahangaan ko. Uh, Unang-una po yung isa sa mga paborito kong leading lady, Miss Isa Calzado. At... Uh, Siyempre po ay nagbigay sa atin ng karangalan sa pandaidigang labanan, uh, Ma'am uh, Dali De Leon. At siyempre po si Tita Boots Anson Roa. At uh, siyempre po yung uh, Diane Pip, Tito Tirso Cruz III. At yung akin po, yung paboritong karakter actor, Res Cortez. Yung lamang po, uh, mabuhay po sa lahat ng ating mga bisita. Sana po magtulungan po tayo. Uh, hindi po tayo nandito para magtalo-talo o hindi magkasundo. Gusto lamang po natin magkaroon talaga ng napakagandang uh, workflow sa ating industry kahit na ang industry po natin ay medyo nasa alanganin ngayon. Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat po, Chairman. Maraming salamat po, uh, Senator Robin Hood Padilla. And before that, before we proceed, uh, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla uh, expressed his intention to co-sponsor this uh, measure. And also I would like to uh, to instruct the, the COMSEC that uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, our majority floor leader, has an opening statement. And uh, he requests that his uh, statement be inserted into the records. Okay, uh, for an orderly discussion, we will first take up the proposed uh, Eddie Garcia law. Any opening statements? Uh, uh, among our resource persons, Mobile Fund, FDCP, if you have any resource per uh, opening statements. Yes, Mr. Cortez. Magandang umago. Galang-galang ng mga ng chairman at mga senador na nandito. 
matagal na namin ipinaglalaban sa pam- na mapabuti ang working conditions sa paggawa ng pelikula at mga shows sa telebisyon. Masyadong mahaba ang working hours, hindi pa sapat ang minimum health and safety standards na ipinapatupad sa TV man o sa pelikula. Ako mismo, maraming beses na ako nakaranas na magtrabaho ng 24 oras o 36 hours straight at babayaran ka lang ng iyong rate na isang araw. At yan ay paulit-ulit na nangyayari. Until the death of Eddie Garcia, kinailangan pang madapa at mamatay ang isang Eddie Garcia para ma-realize ng gobyerno na may dapat ayusin sa mga nakaugalian na. Maliban kay Eddie Garcia, may ilan pang namatay ng mga taga-production, katulad ni Direk Wen Dramas, na pinaghihinalaang work-related dahil sa tuloy-tuloy na pagpupuyat. Hindi na ito pwede baliwalain. Kailangan na ng mabuting pagbabago at magiging permanente lang ang pagbabago kung ito ay ipinag-uutos ng batas. Ang Edgar Bill, ako po ay nananawagan sa ating butihing mga senador na kung maaari maipasa na ang Edgar Bill ng maprotektahan na maprotektahan na legally ang lahat ng industry workers from the biggest superstars to the ordinary utility men, the crew and other workers. Alam naman po natin ng nakaraang kongreso na ipasa na sa kongreso ang batas, ang edigasya bill, pero sa kasamaang palad hindi umabot sa Senado, kaya hindi naging batas. So ako po, Mr. Chair, umaasa na sana uh, sa kongresong ito ay maipasa na at maging batas na ang Eddie Garcia Bill. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, Ginong Res Cortez, FDCP, DGPI. Any opening statements? Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as far as the FDCP is concerned, uh, we laud the efforts of the Senate and uh, Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development, chaired by the Honorable Jingo Estrada, as we tabled the Eddie Garcia Bill in Upper House. This will pave the way for enactment of the Eddie Garcia Bill, which has been longed for by the film and audiovisual industry. Since the production of the film Filipino film in September 1919, the working conditions and occupational health and safety of the audiovisual industry have never been given enough attention and have been working on the premise of self-regulation. The proposed act providing for the occupational safety and health standards for the workers and talents of the movie television industry would set the minimum standards as industry strives to economically lucrative and globally be competitive. The FDCP holds that it's very timely and relevant that the government puts a premium on the protection and safety of the welfare of the workers in the film industry. Although the film industry has a very unique working setup and environment, it does not follow standard working hours where workers come to work from 8 in the morning up to 5 in the afternoon. Film shooting or taping could be scheduled at any time of the day without a turnaround time or rest period. Film shooting or taping could even last sometimes for 24 hours just to finish a particular scene. These stressful conditions and lifestyles led to the demise of some artists and directors related to producers, also known for cutting costs as they prolong the working hours of audiovisual workers. Again, uh, I would like to say that uh, we really laud uh, your honor, uh, the chairman, for uh, chairing the Eddie Garcia bill, and we look forward to the completion of this bill and that it will serve both 
the workers and the producers as far as the Filipino film industry is concerned. Prime Salamat, Guy and Pip. So, Actors Guild, meron ba? Actors Guild, any representative? Okay. Chair? Yes. We have prepared an official statement. May I read? Thank you. Chairman Estrada, esteemed members of the Senate Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development, fellow stakeholders, sa mga kagalang-galang na mambabatas, mga minamahal kong kasamahan sa industriya, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Iza Calzado, currently serving as representative this morning for Actor League of Filipino Actors, an organization comprised of 150 strong membership base. Our mission is to raise our stature as proficient, purpose-driven, and socially responsible contributors to both the industry and society. Salamat po sa pag-imbita sa amin ngayong araw na ito at salamat sa pagbukas muli sa talakayang ito na makakatulong sa amin at sa libu-libong manggagawa ng pelikulang telebisyon, entablado, radyo at online. Sa lahat ng bahagi ng Eddie Garcia Bill, gusto po naming diinan ang isa sa pinakamahalagang provisions nito, ang working hours. To the esteemed lawmakers, we fervently advocate for the implementation of a maximum 14-hour workday, inclusive of meal and rest breaks, for all performers, excluding minors and our seniors. As co-creators in the art of storytelling, we stand united in our call for regulated working hours to ensure optimal performance and safeguard our physical and mental well-being. Our roles as partners and stakeholders in every production are crucial to the success of the entertainment industry. We understand the value of delivering captivating performances that breathe life into the stories we tell. By capping working hours, we aspire to consistently operate at our best, enriching the artistic and cultural landscape while prioritizing our health and vitality. The pandemic's precedent has shown that regulated working hours are achievable without compromising progress. We firmly believe that by institutionalizing this practice, as exemplified by the Eddie Garcia Bill, we can strike a harmonious balance between creative output and the well-being of performers. Billion billion na po ang pagkalugi ng industriya nung pandemya. Nagbukas na, na po muli ang mga sinehan pero nananatili pa ang aftermath nito. Nauunawaan po namin ang mga hirap ng mga producer sa pagkalap ng kanilang puhunan. Ngunit kami rin po ay kulang na sa lakas upang mapakinabangan pa ng lubos. Mga ginoo at ginang, kayo na po ang tumulong sa amin. We need a whole of industry approach. While we, as workers, ask for these provisions for our protection, kami na po ang nagsasabi, tulungan nyo rin po ang aming mga producers through tax breaks and by providing them an enabling environment to be able to healthily produce more content. To our fellow stakeholders, let's demonstrate that we are capable of elevating our commitment to further enhance our work especially if our working conditions can still be improved. This should be a joint effort, and we are wholeheartedly united in our goal to raise the quality of our industry even further. However, we need to start by lifting each other up, because we believe that we all share a common destination. That's why today, we beseech your esteemed offices to consider our plea and recognize the necessity of enacting regulations that protect the health and livelihoods of those who contribute so significantly to the entertainment world. Umpisahan po sana natin sa pagpapatupad ng isang universal na limitasyon sa oras ng trabaho. Ito'y hindi lamang makamanggagawa. Ito rin ay makapelikula. Ito ay makapilipino. Maraming salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Inang uh, Isal uh, Colzado. DGPI, yes. uh, Derek Mark. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, Honorable Senators. Uh, 
ang Directors Guild of the Philippines po ay uh, binubuo ng mga director na siya pong nagiging kapitan sa isang production. Uh, ang nagiging uh, challenge po sa amin uh, ay sa bawat production, iba ang, nag-iiba-iba ang standard ng working hours. Uh, bagamat nandiyan dyan po ang, ang, mga, ang batas na, na itinalaga ng uh, Department of Labor, Uh, iba po ang ang batas sa mga seniors, iba po ang batas, uh, iba po ang ang working hours sa pelikula, iba ang sa teleserye, iba po ang sa TV commercials, pati po yung rate kung kailan may overtime, pati po yung turn around time yung pahinga, nag-iiba-iba. So uh we welcome po namin ang uh, ang hearing na ito para mai sa batas ang Eddie Garcia Bill para po maging Uh, standard at maisaayos at gawin natin iisa ang definition at standard ng pagiging uh, ng professionalization ng ng ating uh, pagtatrabaho sa pelikula, television, radio at uh, online content. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat direct Bailey. Uh, direct Carlitos, do you have an opening statement or you will just associate yourself with the statement of uh, direct Mark? Um, no, I, I don't have a. Uh, um, magandang umaga, your honors. Uh, I don't have a. I don't have a, an opening statement. We just. Uh, I, I would just like to participate in the discussions in the as we go through the bills. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Director Carlitos. From the producers, uh, so association producers, any opening statement? Please introduce yourself. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm Percival Intalan from the Producers Association. You are? Percival Intalan from the Producers Association. Mm -hmm. uh, I, will, I will just read the opening statement. Um, a singer sings, a composer writes, a painter paints. But no art is as much a product of a colony, a community, a system that comes close to how a movie is produced. Anyone who has ever stepped foot onto a movie set can attest to this. Every person involved in the production plays a part, and it is in this synergy that permits the creation of great work. We, the members of the producer ng mga pelikulang Pilipinas sa Asia Incorporated, or PMPPA, express our support for any initiative which seeks to ensure the safety of every single individual who forms part of this treasured industry. Which sole purpose is to bring joy and move the hearts of audiences worldwide with Filipino-driven stories and talent. However, we humbly implore this honorable committee to take our statement here today into consideration while deliberating upon these bills. The enactment of legislation in order to be truly responsive to the need it is serving must be conscious of the context within which it is passed. It is in this light that we raise awareness to this honorable committee on the limitations of this legislation that seeks to protect, keep safe, and improve the conditions of work of film and television workers. The film industry is in a dire strait. Theaters have yet to seek the same turnout as was normal three years ago. The prices of tickets have been getting higher with every passing month. Local films that manage to see cinematic releases enjoy barely meager support from the audiences. Layoffs related to movies from production to distribution have been inescapable. Simply put, it is getting more and more difficult to continue to make Filipino movies. The strain is carried by everyone along the line of production, from the persons manning the lights to the highest paid talents. Just as in a community, wherever possible help may be sourced, help was provided. Most of the producers continue to try to put out films and consequently provide jobs despite the current state of affairs. They have also been trying to find new avenues for their movies to earn, such as digital distribution. Notwithstanding the dismal returns on copious investments, those who can still try to produce films for Filipino audiences. However, it is a brutal reality that less local films are being made and seen by those audiences. With these bills introducing more restrictions and requirements for producers just trying to get their films made, we fear that we will soon be seeing the numbers dwindle into even more alarming statistics. We welcome measures 
will be introduced to ensure the safety of everyone involved in film and television production. The producer surely accepts such initiatives, as the safety of one means the well-being of all. We simply urge our Honorable Senate to consider the way the introduction of some of the mechanics of these bills will, be, will impact our industry and possibly cause a domino effect that will lead to catastrophic results. Our plea to this Honorable Committee is that it will be more forgiving as the industry tries to recuperate from the strain of the past three years, more attentive to the hardships of all sides, and more considerate to the state of the producers as it is equally considerate to the state of workers. From this Honorable Senate, we hope to be encouraged rather than alienated, possibly in the form of bills providing tax break subsidies and other forms of support that will aid our ailing industry and give it the chance it needs to possibly flourish once more. We just pray that this will not be remembered as a period in our history where only a scant number of movies are produced on account of this legislative climate. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, uh, Dole? Maram maraming salamat, uh, Ginoong Tagapangulo. Hayaan niyo pong bat batiin ko po ang lahat ng isang mapagpalang umaga sa ating lahat. In behalf of the Department of Labor and Employment, Mr. Chair, uh, this representation would like to convey our collective support to the objectives of the pending measure. We at Dole have one in common, that is to protect all workers and promote their welfare. Mr. Chair, the proposed law, however, is a shift in paradigm. It is a shift because the bills intend to change the way we think and the way we do things in the field of labor and employment. The bills attempt to challenge the norm. So what's the norm? Labor standards, including labor administration, typically applies to persons, employer and employer, employees under employer-employee relationship. The subject bills, Mr. Chair, have at least three main features. One, creation of new standards. And when we create new standards, we create new rights and obligation. Second, application of existing standard relationship outside the typical employer-employer relationship. And third, Mr. Chair, expansion of the authority and jurisdiction of the Department of Labor and Employment. The department would like to have a brief manifestation, our opening statement, because in the proper time, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, the department would like to provide specific inputs and insight to the specific provision of the bills. Just to reiterate, the Department of Labor and Employment stands with the worker, all worker, including in the film, television, and radio entertainment industry, in the attainment of full, decent, and productive employment. Ika nga, Mr. Chair, no one, no worker shall be left behind. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga. Okay, uh, uh, before uh, I uh, uh, recognize uh, Senator Padilla, any other? Ah, Tita Boots. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning po, Senator Padilla. Mga mahal namin po mga kasama sa industriya. Magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Kanina unang-una pong nagsalita ang presidente at CEO ng Mobile Fund, si Res Cortez. Uh, ngayon po naman, uh, hihingi lang po ako ng take two. Uh, uh, ginagawad po natin sa pelikula bilang chairman po ng Mobile Fund. At dahil din po uh, sa tingin ko, ako po yata ang pinakamatanda <laughs> sa mga uh, kumakatawan sa producers, uh, and the other stakeholders. Pero maganda pa rin na. <laughs> 78 years old na po. And magyayabang po ako. Just last week, naging lola sa tuhod na po ako. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yes. Um, 
madalas po nababanggit kanina yung institu uh, institutionalization, ano po, uh, with due credit to your father, Senator Estrada, uh, bagamat when he was mayor, producer, actor, kilalang kilala siya sa kanyang tawang gawa, sa kanyang pagtulong sa napakarami sa industriya, lalo na po ng maliliit. It was he together with the help of other colleagues in the industry, but he spearheaded the institutionalization of welfare and benefits work in the industry. 1974, 49 years ago. And um, to, to his vision, we credit the um, uh, official formation and establishment of the Movie Workers Welfare Foundation, which is observing its 50th anniversary in 1974. Kung pagsasama-sama po lahat at kung ibubuod po natin lahat ng layunin at adhikain ng iba't ibang mga samahan or organisasyon na naririto, hindi po talaga tayo lalayo sa buod ng welfare and benefits ng ating mga uh, kasama sa industriya, lalong-lalo na po ang mga maliliit um, on camera and off camera. And um, it was in 1974 that then San Juan Mayor Estrada commissioned a body of legal luminaries and the leaders of the industry to create a charter and to establish the bylaws of Mowell Fund, parang nga mo ma-institutionalize ito. So, hindi po bago itong adhikain na ito. Kaya lamang po at that time, uh, it was on a smaller scale because of budget considerations. And um, because marami pong mga challenges then as there are now. So, it is just so wonderful and I believe nothing happens by chance. Napapanahon po na ituloy na po natin, uh, ibayuhin po natin itong mga laws na ito. So we can go a notch farther than institutionalization. So we can go into enactment of laws. Para po magkaroon ng ipin, maging mas matibay po ang ating adhikain para sa ating mga um, kasama sa industriya. Napapanahon na, go na po sana. At uh, sana po ay uh, para po kay former President Joseph Estrada, yung legacy po niya as founder of Mobile Fund ay mapatotohanan uh, on a scale bigger than what he founded Mobile Fund for. Marami salamat po. Uh, thank you very much sa paboritong leading lady ng tatay ko. Thank you. Uh, meron pa kung uh, may gusto mag-opening statement. Attorney Diokno, what do you represent? Teka, wala akong mata. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. GMA. Attorney Angelo right. Diokno from GMA, Mr. Chair. Uh, GMA produces both uh, entertainment and uh, news media. So, uh, GMA uh, supports the effort to create rules and regulations to guide our industry in its operations. However, it is submitted that new legislation may not be needed. Having existing laws such as the Labor Code, the Civil Code, the Insurance Code of the Philippines, among others, SSS Law and Pag-ibig Law, uh, may be sufficient already. What may be explored is the creation of a department order similar to that of the construction industry for hospitals and for security agencies as a guide for the industry. Uh, Your Honor, whether it is legislation or a uh, department order or administrative, administrative order, what we pray for is that the committee uh, uh, truly consider how the industry operates such that the industry, uh, which as mentioned earlier is already in uh, a difficult situation, could stay afloat and that the re regulation is not difficult or close to impossible to comply with but by all stakeholders, not just by the producers, Mr. Chair. That's it, Chair. Thank you, Attorney Diakno. Meron pa kong ibang uh, Mr. Carlos. Uh, Mr. Carlos Miguel Onyati po from the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines. Hello. Uh, Office of Deputy Speaker Mendoza din po. Uh, good morning po ulit sa, kay Mr. Chair at sa ating mga honorable senators at resource persons here today. 
Uh, the TUCP fully supports the long overdue uh, passage and enactment of the Eddie Garcia Act for workers in the film, television, and radio entertainment industry. Noon hung 18th Congress, si TUCP President po at ang TUCP Party List Representative po na ngayon ay Deputy Speaker Raymond Mendoza. Siya po yung nag-chair ng Subcommittee on Labor Standards na tumutok ho sa pagkatao ng Eddie Garcia Bill ho sa House of Representatives na naipasa. Kung kaya't ngayon ho ay uh, we express our fervent hope po na sana hindi lang ho sa House pumasa at pati ho dito sa Senado towards the eventual signing po ng ating uh, mahal na Pangulo. We welcome the various provisions of the subject bills that promote better terms and conditions of work, yung mandatory employment contract, yung uh, maximum hours of work po, inclusion ng waiting time at travel time po sa compensable work hours. Pero nais lang din ho namin bigyan din yung kagaya ho ng nabanggit ni uh, Dole Undersecretary Benavides po yung patungkol ho sa Uh, kawalan ho ng employer and employee relationship po ng marami ho sa uh, industriya. Sa tukatunayan ho, meron hong pag-aaral ang DOLE, Institute of Labor Studies, back in 2016 ho, kung saan ho na-discovery ho nila na meron na hong trend na paggamit ng mga independent contractors ho towards freelance work arrangement ho na ang tawag ho ay mga talents at specialists instead po as regular employees. Actually, meron pa nga hong isang observation ho doon na yung mga dati hong regular job position titles, kagaya ho ng lineman at cameraman ho, ay pinapalitan ho yung position titles, gagawin hong line specialist at camera specialist ho, para ho sila ay maging independent contractor as opposed to isang regular employee ho, thereby evading ho yung karamihan ho sa ating mga general labor standards as provided by the labor code. Kung kaya we fully support ho itong uh, legislation ho na mag apply ho sa workers at pati ho sa independent contractor, so yung tinatawag ho na WIC. Pero nananawagan din ho kami na maaari ho magkaroon ng isang mas stringent ho na test para masiguro ho kung sino ho talaga yung rightfully classified as a regular employee at sino ho yung talagang independent contractor at hindi ho nagagamit yung mechanism ho na yon para ho mag-skirt tayo ng general labor standards. At yung pangalawa ho, uh, kagaya ho nung nasa Media Workers Welfare Act, sana ho maglagay din ho tayo dito ng security of tenure provision ho uh, sapagkat uh, alam naman ho natin na marami ho sa mga sa industriya ho ay repeatedly engaged over shorter period of time so so two months three months project based ho thereby hindi ho sila nareregular kahit ito 30 taon na ho sila nagtatrabaho sa isang uh, entity kung kaya to sana ho yung six month probationary period be counted uh, cumulatively po Uh, finally, ho, Mr. Eddie Garcia passed away in 2019. Today, four years since, the TUCP is one with all of you in calling on the Senate to immediately pass the Eddie Garcia. Sila po ang nagdadala ng tuwa, luha at kalaman sa ating tahanan. Nararapat lamang po nating suklian ito ng pagsigurado ng kanilang dissenting pagawa. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, uh, Ginoong Carlos. Yusek Hanerose. Sir, good morning po. COO. Okay, sir. Good morning, Honorable Chairman, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, and the members of the Senate uh, Committees on Labor and Employment, and the uh, Public Information and Mass Media, Senator Robin, Senator Rafi Tulfo, on behalf of Secretary Cheloy Belicaria Garafil, the Presidential Communications Office, wishes to thank the Senate committees for calling for this hearing to consider the various bills that guarantee and institutionalize employment benefits to our workers in the entertainment and media industries. We wish to highlight several points. First, Mr. Chair, the PCO welcomes and supports the consideration of these bills, considering that by virtue of Executive Order Number 16, There are attached agencies placed under the administrative and directive control and supervision of the PCO, which engage the services of media workers. These attached agencies are the Bureau of Broadcast Services, News and Information Bureau, which houses the Philippine News Agency and the Presidential Broadcast Staff, RTVM, two government-owned networks, 
People's Television Network, Inc. and the Intercontinental Broadcasting Corporation are likewise placed under the control of and supervision of the PCO. Considering this setup and recognizing that media workers in the public sector are also face the same difficulties, challenges, and risks, even that come with uh, even that come with their job, the PCO proposes that the final draft of the measures the Senate committees will arrive at will be applicable applicable to all media workers, both in the public sector and those employed by private media ent entities. Second, Mr. Chair, the PCO also recognizes the potential contribution of another attached agency, the Philippine Information Agency, the PIA, in, in the information and education campaign on the protection of the intellectual property rights of workers in the entertainment industry as found in SB numbers 450 and 1889. The PCO supports the engagement of the PIA and respectfully requests that the particular role and functions of the PIA be clearly defined to ensure that this will be aligned with its core mandate under Executive Order Number 11, uh, Series of 1986. Furthermore, the PCO recommends including a provision that will also ensure that the necessary resources will likewise be provided to enable the PIA effectively carry out its function under these measures once enacted into law. Third, Mr. Chair, the PCO likewise seeks to clarify the purpose, use, and beneficiaries of the proposed public information fund as provided under Section 9 of SB Senate Bill Number 16993. Considering that this involves public funds, the PCO recommends that a provision be included to ensure that the same will be created and utilized in accordance with existing rules and regulations formulated by the Department of Budget and Management and the Commission on Audit. Lastly, Mr. Chair, the PCO is submitting its formal position paper on the pending bills detailing the points we raised above. We also wish to be included in the technical working group that the Senate committees will create to work on the draft committee report. Again, we laud the initiative of the Senate committees in, the, in recognizing the value of media and entertainment workers in nation building and demonstrating its recognition through the enactment of laws that will uplift their welfare and protect their rights. Not only does this acknowledge the workers' commitment to their social duties, but it also serves to continuously uphold the constitutional mandate that all workers be entitled to security of tenure, humane conditions of work, and a living wage, and guaranteed the right to self-organization, collective bargaining and negotiations, and peaceful concerted activities. We must note, however, that this constitutional provision does not distinguish between the observation of the rights of public servants from those in the private workforce. Therefore, media workers in the public sector must be afforded equal rights and benefits being in the service of the government and public at all times. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and honorable members of the Senate committees. Thank you very much, uh, Jose Carreros. Lana, so, oh. Well, uh, Executive Director ng NPC. P.T. Forbes, boss. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning po sa ating lahat. At the opening of this uh, first hearing, hearing, I know I share the heartfelt gratitude to the Senate of all the journalists and PC officials, most of us also former reporters, and who are present today for calendaring various proposals that recognize the important role played by the members of the press in our society through the creation of a Media Welfare Act. As mentioned, many, if not all, of the appointees at the PCO are former journalists themselves who directly did experience the shortcomings and difficulties at their workplace that the proposed measures now seek to address. 
These uh, proposals are indeed a welcome development as they go side by side with the overall effort of the Marcos administration to provide a holistic approach to the many problems facing the media sector. The first crucial part is ensuring that our journalists and reporters have a safe media environment where they can practice their profession without fear and quickly addressing any instance of media violence in the higher interest of justice. This part has been addressed by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s decision to continue with the Presidential Task Force on Media Security, or PT forms, created in 2016 with the undersigned as, as its Executive Director, effective May 25, 2023. We are happy to note that all the four recorded violence against the media under the present administration from June 30, 2022, to the present date have all been deemed resolved and the criminal cases ongoing in various courts against the identified suspects with some of them already arrested and behind bars. As for the other crucial part of welfare and benefits, President Marcos, on his assumption, directed the relevant government agencies, particularly the DSWD, to come out with ways and means to assess the members of the to assist the members of the press, including their families, who are in need by providing them with emergency financial and livelihood assistance. And may I also add, Mr. Chair, that President Marcos, if the DSWUD can no longer uh, support any members of the press who are in need, uh, is also assisting directly through his associate welfare civic fund. Uh, as for the, this effort by President Marcos is truly laudable and have, in fact, already benefited hundreds of our colleagues. We are glad that through the proposed measures and through this Congress, many of them are on their way to becoming permanent and no longer beholden to the decision of subsequent administrations. For the measures under consideration, we thank the Chair, Senator Jingo Estrada, for filing Senate Bill 461, Senator Loren Delgarda for filing Senate Bill 496, Senator Bongo for Senate, Senate Bill 1183, Sen Senator Bong Rebilla for Senate Bill 1577, Senator Rapi Tulpo for Senate Bill 1693, and Senator Lito Lapid for Senate Bill 1765. We also wish to thank our colleague and former CIS Party List Representative Nina Taduran for her determined effort to pass HB 2476 during the last Congress, and again to Senator Bong Rebilla, then the Chair of the Senate Committee on Public Information and Mass Media, for his strong and passionate support to the measure. To the measure. While the consolidated bill under SB 1820 failed to pass under the 18th Congress when it was not calendared for third and final reading in the Senate, we expressed the hope, Mr. Chair, that this time the result would be very much different. Looking at the bar's proposals presently under consideration, we note of the many similarities already present under HB 2476 and SB 1820, namely the provisions for a minimum wage, hazard pay, social security benefits, insurance crop coverage, creation of a media tripartite council, and compliance to the relevant provisions of our labor code by both the media workers and media owners. Today's hearing, Mr. Chair, is the start of an historic event as it marks the day when our government and this August chamber take the bold step to create a Philippine media environment that is not only free from fear, but also unburdened by want. Hindi na magmumukhang kawawa at timawa ang mga kasapi ng media. May nandin po itong regalo, Mr. Chair, sa ating dakilang bayani at ama ng pamamahayag na si Gat Marcelles del Pilar Nang ikasandaan at pitumpot tatlong karawan ay ating ipagdiriwang bukas, Agosto 30. Maraming salamat po at magandang maga po sa ating lahat. Salamat, uh, Ginoong uh, Gutierrez. Okay, uh, begin na natin. Yes, uh, what are you representing, Ms. Papin? Uh, kapisanan ng mga actors ng pelikulang Pilipino at television po. Um, representing KAPP? Yes. Why po ba Yes po. Oh, sige. Um, President po si Ms. Imelda Papin, I'm representing them today um, along with Tito Res Cortez. So, Honorable Chair, Honorable Senator um, Padilla, and all distinguished guests, good morning today. I am here before you to express my support for the proposed bill SB 450 that aims to protect the welfare of workers in the movie industry. As a TV, internet, and theater actor, uh, actress, as well as a movie producer, I understand the importance of ensuring the safety and well-being of my fellow artists. 
production staff and technical crew members, as well as everyone else involved on set. One crucial aspect of this bill is to provision um, the provision of insurance coverage for all artists and works, um, workers during filming. This step will provide much needed security and protection in an industry known for its unpredictable, na uh, unpredictable nature. Additionally, limiting working hours to a max maximum of 12 hours per day will address the issue of excessive workload and help prevent burnout. By implementing this regulation, we can protect the physical and mental health of our talented workforce without compromising the quality of their work. It is important to note that many production teams already take measures to ensure the safety and comfort of their workers, such as providing comfort rest areas and air conditioning and offering decent meals. However, formalizing these practices through legislation will ensure that they are universal, um, universally implemented and upheld, fostering a fair and supportive working environment. On behalf of the KAPPT, katipunan ng mga artistang Pilipino sa pelikulang telebisyon, and maraming salamat po once again sa ating presidente sa pagtake ng oath namin at sa kanyang pag-offer ng support sa industriya ng ating pelikula. Filipino, sa internet, television, at sa lahat po ng ating mga um, crew and lahat po na nagtatrabaho sa set. Um, uh, Senator Padilla, Senator Estrada, um, on behalf of um, KAPPT, I would like to express our deepest gratitude for considering this bill. We believe that it is it will be a significant step toward protecting the rights and well-being of those involved in the movie industry. Thank you very much. Mafi Papin Karyan the daughter of Ms. Imelda Papin. Maraming salamat. At doon sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta na dito sa Eddie Garcia Bill at sa Media Workers Welfare Act, saan po ninyo ay pipilitin po namin ipasa ito dahil apat kaming artista senador dito. Senator Robin, ako, si Senator Bong Revilla, Senator Lito Lapid. Nandiyan pa si Senator Grace po, anak ng ating... Huh? Sherwin, pag-ibig mo. Uh, Sherwin, uh, si Senator Gatchajad. Ano, naka mo? Uh, ang pag-ibig? Si Senator Win. Uh, ang pag-ibig nun, artista. Okay. Si uh, Senator Chisi Scudero, ang pag-ibig oh, nun, artista. Hmm. Uh, um, hindi malayong pumasa. Lalo ka na, no? Uh, Oo, oh, naman. Ako naman. Oh, sige na. <laughs> Ikaw na, Senator Robin. <laughs> oh. Ako po ay... Uh, Masayang masaya itong araw na to Medyo itataas ko lang yung energy nyo. Parang ang lungkot lahat. Eh. Ganun. Parang huwag tayong malungkot. Opo, isa lang dapat ang malungkot dito. BIR lang. Opo, kasi uh, alam ko naman na tayo ay uh, magkakasundo-sundo kung magkakaroon tayo ng tax holiday sa pelikula. Dahil alam naman natin lahat na overtax tayo. At uh, hindi naman ako... Ako naman eh naniniwala na ang mga producer natin eh gusto gusto tayong pagbigyan dito sa ating Eddie Garcia na to pero siyempre gusto natin silang marinig. Uh, gusto ko po kayong marinig kung ano po yung uh, kanina nagbigay na po kayo ng mga uh, opening statement po ninyo pero sana ngayon po mas gusto naming malinawan kung ano po yung gusto na gusto ninyong i-amend namin, kung may gusto ba kayong i-amend namin, kung meron ba kayong gustong isiksik pa namin, pakinggan uh, po namin kayo uh, kung sino po sa mga producers natin bago po yung mga artista. Pwede siguro yung producer, member ng uh, producers, uh, association of producers, pwede sumagot. Uh, Mr. Chair, good morning po. I'm Attorney Georgie Alonso po of the PMPPA. I think the most, um, uh, how would I define the word, um, controversial issue insofar as this law is concerned would be the number of the work hours. We do agree that there, have been, there has been a lot of abuse along the way. And we certainly will not, um, agree to any arrangement that people are made to work 24 hours or 36 hours. That is nothing but, um, um, you know, a situation where people are um, not just overburdened, overworked, they're actually 
not being treated like human beings. And there's no way that should be allowed to continue. Um, however, <laughs> um, I apologize, po, but um, eight hours as is one of the numbers that is being um, pro proposed. And um, eight hours is the minimum. Yes, po. Or the maximum. Uh, in the bill that is being proposed, eight hours is the maximum. Maximum. Because right. that is the normal working hours in in any office or company in the Philippines. Including the travel time? Um, well, Your Honor, if we are to look at ordinary employees who go to work every day, travel time is never included. It's it should always not be, be included. Yes, it should not be included. It's always eight hours in the workplace. In the workplace, And okay. according to the labor code, if work is rendered beyond a period of eight hours, there is a payment of overtime, overtime. pay. However, in the case of the film industry, it's a very unique situation. Yes. Because we don't go to offices. We don't have a set place to go to. In fact, we move from one location to another. Mm -hmm. um, if we... Uh, most of the time, when we go to a location, we we set it up from scratch. That's why the production department, the PD goes earlier, like a day before, to set it up. So on the next day, when the people arrive, it's prepared for the shoot. Um, okay. Um, so eight hours is... Um, not going to suffice for us as film producers because it's impossible to finish a film with a, an allocated budget, especially in light of the situation at the moment where not a single film in the year 2023 has reached the break-even point. A lot of movies this year have grossed less than 1 million pesos for one week. The biggest film the biggest gross that any Filipino film reached in the year 2023 was during the MMFF. And it was not even more than 12 million pesos. And for that film to have um, reached break even, they should have grossed at least 72 million pesos. So there's that situation where um, I'm only speaking for the film industry. Um, yes, yes. It's a very difficult um, situation right now, but we are also one with the workers that we are not going to go to the level of abuse, but we are um, appealing to everybody that eight hours will definitely not suffice. Um, in the past... Our so what is on your mind? If eight hours will not suffice, how many hours do you think? We are proposing, Your Honor, 14 hours. 14 hours. As the like maximum. What, uh, Ms. Isa Calzada has uh, proposed yes, 14 po. hours. Why 14 hours? Um, on, sa totoo lang po, it's not enough. <laughs> but on we will work the, within... On the part of the producers, 14 hours is not enough. Yes, on but we are, willing actors, to, we are willing to compromise at 14 hours. Mm -hmm. Kasi po, um, there, we have to take into consideration a variety of things. Number one, um, people who work on the set, in at least in many of our films, do not get the minimum wage of 610 pesos per day. Some actors are receiving half a million pesos per day as their talent fees. Net of that, net of the withholding tax. Um, directors, I don't know the current rate, range from 50, 40,000 to even um, 80,000 per day. And this is way, way, way beyond the minimum wage. Of course, we also have to consider the utility men. The going rate for utility persons is 1,500 per day. So that's already way above the minimum wage as well. So um, as far as we're concerned, the, the rates that we are paying um, suffices in so far as the number of work hours equivalent to 14 per day. But you also have to consider their health and welfare. Of the members of the movie That's industry. the reason why, Your Honor, we do not work every day. We work like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so there's time to rest. But many of the workers also want to work with other productions on a Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And they also have other additional work on a Sunday. So that's beyond us because as far as we're concerned, we um, allocate a certain number of days where we are sure that they have a rest day the following day. 
Are the other producers uh, following your system? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday? Sa taping? Uh, for shooting? For shoot in the movie. Every other day? Especially sa taping? Sa taping po sa, sa television, Your Honor, that we there, there, are, there are different arrangements. But most of the time, it's MWF or TTHS. Most mm -hmm. of the time. Like more than 50% of the time. Okay. And for movies, yeah. Because we also need rest for everyone because they need to prep up again for the next day for pre-prod and the like. Mm -hmm. Unless they are locked in, like they're somewhere abroad or in some province in the Visayas or Mindanao that they have to work every day. That's why special arrangements in so far as work hours, they will have to also be adjusted because they're working every day. All right. Uh, Chairman, pwede po natin na uh, hingan ng uh, sagot yung ating mga artista patungkol po sa sinabi ng ating producer? Ah, okay. Uh, boss, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, kung Attorney Joji, kung babasahin mo yung nakalagay dito, uh, eight hours in a day, if the worker is required work beyond eight hours, the maximum actual hours of work shall not exceed 12 hours. So, uh, hindi naman nakapako ito. Ang isang araw ay eight hours lang. Pwedeng extend kung kailangan pa sa ng producer, pwedeng extend hanggang 12 hours. Uh, and I think Yusek uh, Binabides can explain this kasi dun sa uh, department order ng DOLE, uh, tinanong din namin na yun, but kailangan ilagay pa yung eight hours. So ang explanation ng DOLE, uh, and I think uh, naandito si Yusek Binavides, uh, siya ang pwede mag-explain kung bakit kailangan ilagay yung eight hours kasi yun ang nasa batas ang sa pangkalahatang manggagawa. Ang, ang working hours ay eight hours constitute a day Pero sa pelikula ay hindi pa pwede yung 8 hours lamang. Kaya nilagay dito na if the worker is required to work beyond 8 hours, the maximum actual hours of work shall not exceed 12 hours. So you know ang nakalagay dito. So, pero ang nire-request naman ng uh, si no, taga PMPPA, gusto nila maging 14 hours. Pero napag-usapan na thoroughly itong bagay na ito sa uh, lower house nung nakarang uh, uh, kongreso at uh, napagkasundo niya, uh, binasi ito sa department order ng DOLE at uh, yun ang nakalagay doon. So yun ang explanation and I think uh, Yusek Binavides can add to this. Yes, uh, Sir Robin. Chairman, pwede natin marinig si... Uh... Uh, bago yan, uh, Sir okay. Robin, excuse me. Uh, Comsec na ipasa na sa house to? Hindi pa na ipasa. Third reading. Ano yung nakasaad dun sa build sa House of Representatives? Eight hours? Twelve. 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 Eight, to, eight to twelve. Okay. Let's see. Mom. Sabi niyo po kanina, 14 hours, yes. okay sa inyo? Para po sa amin, ang decision po namin, at because we do understand and we do recognize that, you know, what the producers are going through, uh, it's, a, it's a very good compromise para sa amin ang 14-hour workday, which I, as I stated earlier, inclusive of meal and rest breaks. So yun po ang aming stand. But dun sa mga senior citizen, ilan hours ang working hours nila? 12? Maximum of 12? Or 8? Mr. Chair, uh, yes. sa mga bata, iba yun. Ano, tinatanong ko yung kasing edad mo? Yeah, 8 hours lang po. 8 hours lang. 
for okay. senior citizens, Your Honor, it's eight hours. For children, it's four hours. For children, it's four, four hours only. Hours. All right. So senior citizen, eight hours maximum. Eight hours maximum for senior citizen. Yun po yung inobserve namin, Your Honor. Talaga yung inobserve ninyo sa mga producers, inobserve nyo ba yung eight the, hours maximum sa mga senior citizen? Yes po, and they're being given priority when it comes to the schedule in the shoot. Chairman, yes, sir. follow up ko lang po yung doon po sa mga senior citizen at doon po sa mga bata, meron naman po silang standby area, no po? Kahit saan naman lugar, no po? Meron naman po silang I cannot speak on behalf of all the productions, Your Honor, but in our case, most of us, yes, po. We have a standby area for kids and for senior citizens. It's air-conditioned, po. In fact, a number of us have a special tent also for the talents, and they're also in in an air-conditioned tent. Opo, kasi kadalasan po kasi nung pagdating doon sa mga talent, nasa kalsada lang eh. Kawawa naman yung mga talent. Pwede po ba natin i- ano na sa batas yun? Para sundin po ng lahat. Pa para naman po hindi naman yung uh, masasabi natin na uh, yung iba pinapractice, yung iba hindi. I am all for that, Your Honor. In fact, I produced a film specifically to raise awareness about the conditions of extras that was played by Ms. Vilma Santos. Maraming salamat po. All right. Uh, with regard to the House bill that has been passed already on third reading, have you... Are you supportive of the House bill that uh, has been passed on third reading? Uh, yes, Mr. Did Chairman. Did they conduct committee hearings? Definitely. Yes. Because if uh, you are going to, if you are supportive of the House bill, maybe we can adopt it. We can adopt the House bill para wala nang baikam if you are supportive of it. But we will have, the, the, we will have to have uh, some revisions or some am amendments. Yeah, it, meron po uh, konting revision. Pero basically, uh, we agree on that kasi nga na-approve na yan ng lower house nung nakaraang Congress at nirefile ngayon. So hindi pa na ano? So if that was approved during the last Congress, hindi pa na-approve ngayon? Hindi pa. Nirefile. Huh? For this Congress. Oh, na-approve na rin sa yeah. third reading. Oh, All right. Yes, uh, Derek Carlos. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to speak for for uh, myself as president of Reina Films and also as, as a member of the Directors Guild of the Philippines, if I may be allowed. Yes. Yung ano lang, just some from based on the discussions that have been going on, I, I my. My memory, I, I, I understand from from my last um, uh, the last position of our of the of the DGPI on on uh, as far as I'm aware, sa ano sa sa, sa working hours was uh, in the last position paper that we submit submitted to the Senate. It was 16 hours, uh, ang maximum working time, uh, um, and uh, and uh, it. Eight hours a minimum, but sixteen hours a maximum, and then meron, uh, I think twelve. I believe uh, ang ano ang seniors uh, twelve hour. Uh, if I if I remember correctly, it's twelve hour twelve hours. Uh, pero provided that they be allowed to work if they would sign a waiver. I believe that was the last position. Um, uh, ang ano lang namin kasi, uh, and I'm speaking as both a director at saka as a producer. Um, is basically to balance the interests of. Uh, we understand. I mean, coming from, we, uh, we have a, a great respect for the lessons learned from the Eddie Garcia case. Uh, yung ano yung we're really concerned about safety as well. Uh, we just like to balance the work, the the interest of working con of the working conditions of worker, the quality of the film being made because speaking as a director and also the sustainability based on the producers and. And also uh, the audience interest in the quality of the films that they will see. So, sa, uh, sa, uh, sa, uh, just 
you know, just just like to connect all of these things. Kabit kabit lahat yung working hours with uh, the number of shooting days that the producer can afford to uh, to uh, uh, spend for, and the quality of the film that will come out will be which would be in pub in the public, in the interest of the of the viewing public anyway. So yun ang aming ano dito is to balance those interests. So we're all in favor of the um, the insurance. Uh, things that are related to safety, insurance, uh, and uh, I mean, we, 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 I'm sure you will go into the details later. But I mean, we're 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 in favor of that. Yung, yung production insurance uh, um, for for everybody. Yung working hours. Our last position was really 16 hours. And I'm talking about yung pinaka. Um, yung I'm not talking about. Actors necessarily definitely will be less than the 16 kasi hindi naman sila first in, last out. I'm talking about the first in, last out. So yun ang sinasabi naming 16 hours and that's usually what that, that I, I don't know if that would be the location manager or, or in some cases the director in some cases the the, the unit. But yun ang, yun ang last position namin on it and um, again it's really to balance everything because uh, of course safety and working conditions but the other, the other interest kasi is ang foundation naman ng all of these concerns for safety and working conditions is that there are movies continually being produced in, in industry sustaining quantities. At kung mawawala naman ang producers natin because of uh, hindi kaya with given the conditions uh, na wala silang, walang guarantees of playtime in the theaters for more than one screen, maybe sometimes first day, last day, wala namang guarantees na ganun, walang tax break so far. Uh, parang the balance is just tilting away from sustainable industry production. I'm, t I'm talking about the movies. I don't know the conditions in t television or in, uh, in commercials or in some of the bills, in one of the bills yata kasama rin ang theater. So I don't know, really know what the, know what the, what the situations are in the, I'm talking about films. So yun lang ang, I just wanted to make that manifestation, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Director Carlitos. GMA7, uh, total pinag-uusapan natin tong Eddie Garcia Law. Sa inyo nangyari yung pagkamatay ni Tito Eddie. Ano ba ang pagkukulang ninyo? Bakit nangyari yung hindi dapat natin inaasahan? Mr. Chair, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Pwede mo tanggalin ng face mask mo. Uh, uh, if I may keep it on, Mr. Chair, because I'm taking care of an uh, elderly father who is... Okay. Sick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, with regard to that particular matter, Mr. Chair, uh, I wasn't part of the investigate, investigating committee for that Eddie Garcia incident, Mr. Chair. So uh, I cannot answer that question, Mr. Chair. I apologize. Four years ago, well, uh, what was the result of the investigation? I wasn't part of that, Mr. Chair. I, I was only sent here, Mr. Chair, to... Oh, so who can answer my question? Bills, Mr. Chair. I apologize, Mr. Who Chair. Who can answer my question? Are you the only representative from GMA7? We have observers, Mr. Chair, but I, 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 they were not uh, uh, sent here, your, Mr. Chair, to speak on behalf of GMA, Mr. Chair. It should... Ikaw ang pinadala ng GMA7. Dapat alam mo, dapat isasagot mo rito. Uh, for for uh, the particular... lang yung tanong ko, ano yung pagkukulang na nangyari sa hindi na dapat natin naasahan na nangyari? Hmm. I cannot answer that. Meron kayo pagkukulang, ano yung mga improvements na ginawa ninyo? Uh, for the improvements, Mr. Chair, I, we, now we are very compliant, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, with the Occupational Safety Hazard Law in, in the sense that all of our locations yes, now, Mr. Chair, have Yes, what improvements have you made? All of our... Avoid similar incidents. All of our locations now, Mr. Chair, have safety officers on site. Uh, to determine the hazards and the safety of each location. Because, Mr. Chair, prior to the incident, there were questions being asked with regard to which is to be considered a workplace because our industry is uh, unique in the sense that we are not confined to one uh, building. Uh, we have locations, we have shoots in different locations, our media outfits go around. So there was still that question of what is to be considered a workplace. But after that incident, Mr. Chair, 
uh, all of our locations uh, have safety officers uh, that are trained by Dole. Uh, we have been partnering with Dole to to get the proper training, to get the proper levels of safety officers, Mr. Chair. Are you observing it right now? Uh, in During your tapings? Yes, Mr. Chair. They, they have safety officers on location, Mr. Chair. No more accidents after Eddie Garcia? Not. Even minor? Uh, there, there, uh, there were some minor accidents, Your Honor, but we reported directly to Dole as required by the Oslo. Excuse and, me. Uh, uh, there have been some minor accidents, but we reported to Dole through the Wair or the accident report form. Here. What, what were the minor accidents? Who is uh, Miss Cheryl Ching Si? You can, you can you maybe can shed light. Uh, you are also from. JMA Entertainment Group. Maybe were you there in uh, in, uh, in the previous hearings in the House of Representatives? Um, no, sir. I wasn't there, Pa. Are you privy to what happened? Uh, um, I was the AVP for drama back then, but I was not on the location set when it happened. What about the investigation? Do you know the results of your inv your internal investigation? No. Who conducted the investigation, by the way? Was it internal on your part? There was an internal investigation, okay. what, Mr. Chair. What, are the, what were the results? Four years but, ago was passed. And unfortunately, Mr. Chair, we were not the uh, officers that signed the investigation report, Mr. Chair. We, we could give the names, Mr. Chair, of those who signed the investigative report, which we have similarly done, Mr. Chair, in the uh, House of Representatives. Did you give a copy to the House of Representatives of your investigation report? I believe so, Mr. Chair. Do you have a copy right now that you can Not present Mr. to Chair. us? Not, Mr. Chair. Uh, can you provide us a copy tomorrow? Uh, we'll send us in the password. Yes, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, Ms. Uh, no. What were the minor accidents that you were talking about? Minor accidents. How... Uh, how how can we try to avoid these minor accidents happening in our tapings? Mr. Chair, according to our HR, just uh, some... According to your? To our representative from the Human Resource Department, because he's the one responsible in submitting the work accident report to Dole. So it's mm. just uh, minor scratches on the knees, Mr. Chair. Like what? Ano yung minor nga? Gusto ko nga malaman. So we can try to avoid it. Uh, uh, minor scratches caused by uh, someone slipping. Hmm. Uh, siguro pwede na... Lika, lika na. Ikaw na nga magsalita. Hmm. Pakilala ka muna, ano? Uh, good, good morning po, sir. Um, sir, minor injuries like uh, yung pag-akyat sa hagdan, namamali ng yapak, sir. And then uh, susugatan yung tuhod. Usually yung ganun, sir. Yun lang. Oh, sir. Oh, minsan yung, di natin may iwasan talaga yun. Yes, sir. Tsaka, sir, yung, yung minsan din yung na tumatas lang yung VP, mga ganun lang, sir. Oh, matatanda. Huh? Tumatas yung blood pressure. O oh, senior citizen. Kahit yung hindi, sir, may mga ganun din. So, Kahit mga bata? Ay, wala naman, sir. So, meron kayong medical team doon? Naka-standby? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mer meron kaming, ano doon, uh, yung train nga ng uh, safety officer. May mga Plus, paramedics, gano'n? Yes, yes, sir. Meron din, sir. Right. Mr. Chair. So, nireport niyo yan sa Dole? Yes, Mr. Chair. 24 hours after, ano? Uh, 24 hours after the accident, na nireport niyo sa Dole? Um, yung iba, Mr. Chair, ang, ang required lang yata sa Dole that within 24 hours are those um, fatal incident like death. However, for minor injuries, I think... Hindi na kailangan. Hindi naman kailangan 24 hours, hmm. Mr. So, Chair. So, aware kayo na merong multa, na merong penalty pag yes, hindi nyo nirefer sa, sa Dole? Y yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Yusek Benavides, ilan na ba nare-report ng GMA sa inyo? Or, na, uh, hindi lang GMA, ABS-CBN or other 
uh, movie producers. Uh, Mr. Chair, may, be, may we be allowed to uh, provide the data? Wala ka data? Yeah. Huwag mo naman basahin lahat siya. Hindi tayo matatapos siya. Yung reporting. Yung reporting lahat. Mr. Chair, while waiting for the data, uh, under the Occupational Safety and Health uh, Standard and under Republic Act 11058, if there are instances of fatal accident, the cases should be reported within 24 hours. And uh, for other incidents, uh, that, that should be part of the uh, report on an annual basis. At present, Mr. Chair, uh, meron po tayong 94 incidents of fatal incidents uh, that is across industries. Pero ang karamihan po dito ay nasa... What do you mean by across industries? Uh, ang karamihan po dito ay nasa manufacturing at construction industries, Mr. Chair. No, we're talking about the entertainment industry. Uh, based po sa report po namin, wala pong uh, bagong uh, report. Aside from the Edgar Sia incident? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Aside from the Eddie Garcia incident, wala na. Uh, there were reports, uh, pero I, I think uh, minor. those were not... Sinasabi na GMA7, minor lang. Yes, ma'am. Hindi naman talaga natin may iwasan yun. Magdanan or... Meron po mga report, pero the, the report was uh, submitted to us na hindi po nangyari yung uh, pagkakasakit o pagkamatay ng isang manggagawa sa lugar po ng trabaho. Mm -hmm. So yun po, yun po yung nasabi ko kaninang mga uh, big names sa movie industry na medyo nauna po. Okay, uh, ABS-CBN? Meron ba ABS-CBN? Yes. Meron ba kayong, nagtitaping pa kayo, di ba? Okay. Meron ba kayong incident na, na minor or major accidents sa uh, nangyari sa taping? Minor. Minor. Yes, Your Honor, we also have... After this Eddie Garcia incident? Minor Meron. Like what? Um, Your Honor, similar din po dun sa uh, case po ng GMA7. Mga strips, mga falls po. Mm -hmm. And then normally po yung mga rehearsals din po. Kasi may mga trips din. And, so and meron din po. kayong medical team na naka-assign during location? Meron din po kaming safety officer, Your Honor. And meron din po kaming mga medics on site po. Uh, whether kapag nasa location po or nasa remote shooting po. Alimbawa, yung isang artista na tumba na ano na bigla na tumba na inatake ano, ano gagawin kung wala kayo ambulansya doon ano, ano gagawin ninyo uh, may, meron po kaming first aid team po doon and then meron po kaming standby emergency vehicle po agad kasi under po sa Oslo naman po kapag within uh, certain radius po yung hospital presence po meron po kami pwedeng gamitin na standby emergency vehicle. Eh kung nasa location, wala hospital, paano? May ambulance deployment na po yan para po madala po agad natin dun sa... Ano po. Pero so, the initial... Eh, wala mga hospital dun sa probinsya? The initial po, Your Honor, is the medical team po. May first aid po na nakadeploy. May doktor? Uh, yung first aid team po natin. Walang doktor? Under po kasi sa Oslo po, Your Honor, is yung first aid team po natin. And then the vehicle, the standby emergency vehicle and the ambulance po are the ones that will bring it to the nearest hospital po natin. So, nagko-concentrate lang kayo sa taping, no? hindi sa shooting. Pati shooting? Shooting din po, Your Honor. Pag in-compound po namin, Doctor, ay, Your Honor, meron po kaming uh, assigned po ng mga physicians and doctors po. Both? Both sa shooting tsaka sa taping? Pag in-compound po, Your Honor. Pag nasa shooting at location po kasi, first aid po yung requirement po under the Oslo po. And then, itatakbo po natin through either the ambulance or the standby emergency vehicle po, based po doon sa requirement din po. Ganon din ba ang GMA-7? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Pareho? Yes, Mr. Chair. Sigurado kayo? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yung ibang producers, yung mga nagpro-produce ng teleserye or nagpro-produce ng pelikula, ganon din? Meron din kayong naka-standby na medical your, officer? Your Honor, yes po. We have safety officers and mm -hmm. as a matter of me a medic, and then we take note if there needs to be an ambulance, meaning there's a big uh, there's a big scene. We usually have an ambulance on set. If not, po, Your Honor, we have uh, access to a nearby hospital. It's already been noted in case of an emergency. The location, the hospital. Pa. We bring the medics, po, and sometimes if it's a bigger group, we have an ambulance so that it's a quicker. It's uh, quicker. The ambulance to is well equipped. Yes, po. Hmm. 
Hmm? Baka naman bulan sila, naka, may meron ng kama doon. No? <laughs> no, may stretcher doon. No? No, walang, ha? We usually work, ito. we work po, we usually with uh, Lifeline, Stratmed. Uh, they're really first aid uh, ambulance ambulances. Because, kaya natin pinapasa itong, o tinatalakay natin itong Eddie Garcia Bill, is that we want to avoid uh, another incident. Yes, pa. Of that nature. Kasi kawawa naman itong mga, uh, lalo-lalo ni mga senior citizen. Kailangan natin alagaan talaga yun. Na, na gusto talaga uh, magtrabaho. Now, uh, shift tayo sa overtime. Okay, nagbabayad daw mga producers na overtime sa mga artista? After 8 hours or after 12 hours? Your Honor, our practice at the moment is everything is What is the practice right now? Right now, kasi for Your Honor, everything is negotiated as a fixed fee. Meaning, walang distinction from, from base rate to overtime rate. So everything is set at a premium rate, meaning for the day. Okay, bago ito, doon sa luma natin batas, okay? Uh, batas ng, uh, ng uh, dole, 8 hours maximum. Okay, sinusunda natin yon. Siyempre, dito sa movie industry, it's very unique. Hindi mga pwedeng 8 hours lang. Pag, pag lumagpas ng halimbawa 14 hours, nagbibigay ba kayo ng compensation, overtime work, eh, overtime pay? Hindi. Wala, wala, po, wala. Oh, wala po kaming arrangement na ganun, Your Honor. Pwede po, si GMA7. For, for talents, there's no overtime yes. pay because the, they're governed by the contracts that they sign. So kung ano po yung talent fee na naka-indicate naka -indicate doon na per taping day, yun okay. po yung... Okay, bago nangyari itong Eddie Garcia incident, Ilan hours nyo pinapatrabaho ang mga talents ninyo, mga artista ninyo? Okay. The likes of superstar like Robin Padilla. Ilan oras nyo pinagtatrabaho sila? Kasi syempre, ako, nag-produce din tayo ng mga pelikula. Gusto ko, saga rin, di ba? Para... Huwag tayo magbayad the next day, di ba? Pero syempre, we also have to think, to take into consideration yung kalusugan ng mga artista natin. Kasi, aminin natin, tayo mga producer, pag per, lalo na pag per day. Halimbawa, si Senator Robin, limandan libo isang araw, pakakulang pa yan. Siyempre, pag hindi natapos, say, gusto natin pilitin na tapusin na yan para hindi tayo magbayad the next day ng kalahating milyon. Tama po ba? Hmm. Ilan oras siya pinagtatrabaho yung mga superstar katulad ni Senator Robin? Your Honor, depende po yan sa, sa cluster sa araw na yon. It can go as low as sometimes mga 4 hours lang. Sometimes it can go as high as 20 hours. Depende 20, po yan. 20 hours. Pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic. Yeah, pre-pandemic. Bale, yung 20 hours, ilang sequences yun? Depende rin po. Kasi kung, um, kung heavy sequences po yan, mga nasa 10 sequences a day, pero kung... Mahaba. Opo, pag, or mahihira po ang sequences. Pero pag uh, madadali lang po yung sequences, pwede po yung Pero mga... Pero katulad po yung Senator Robin, sequences. ang mga galing artista, madali lang yun. Madali lang po. Di ba? <laughs> Unless action Marte. scenes yan, Your Honor. Ano na? Unless action scenes po. Pag action po, mahira pong i-mount. Matagal. Matagal po. So 20 hours. Pre-pandemic. Maximum. Po. Maximum, opo. Ino-observe nyo pa rin hanggang ngayon yun? Hindi na po. O ilang thought, hours sa maximum? Uh, maximum, mga 16. 16. Opo. In 16 hours maximum, tapos 8 hours tulog. May travel time ka pa. 12 hours po ang ano, turnaround time. Turnaround is so, 12. Yes. You're raising your hand, Direct Mark. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, we, the actors and the director and the production team uh, are discussing ano yung nangyayaring ngayon. Uh, uh, in comparison also to, to post-pandemic. Ang problema kasi, uh, lalo na sa teleserye, uh, or ano, meron, meron tinatawag silang for airing. Pag for airing, ang isang episode, kailangan matapos yan. So, kung i-air na yan bukas ng gabi, kailangan, kung kinakailangan tapos, hindi na ma-afford na mag-extend, mag, ano, mag, uh, mag na mag-second day. So, kailangan tapusin kahit sa totoo lang, 
many times hanggang ngayon umaabot pa rin yung 24 hours and i'm not so sure i'm I, i'm not uh pointing to any production team but there are uh, instances na lumalagpas sa 20 hours yung ano yung uh, uh, you're saying meron production na uh... ang ano kasi sir yung ang problema kasi merong budget Kung baga, ang isang ang isang episode or ang isang production meron na state na budget sa so, paglumagpas sila ng pag alam ano ni magaling yung artista katulad ni Senator Robin Patilla uh, matatagalan ang isang eksena so at tapos ang mangyayari kapag uh, kapag for airing ba, kailangan na itong mag-air or worse pag sa pelikula kailangan na itong mag-open at a certain date kasi may play date na may play date na Uh, sasagarin nila kasi hindi hindi nila na foresee na lalagpas ng ganong kadami ito pre-pandemic to direct ha actually hanggang yeah. ngayon nangyayari pa rin now? not as bad as uh, as pre-pandemic pero nangyayari pa rin excuse me I'm sorry Go excuse ahead, me yes. sir um, Mr. Chair uh, Senator Padilla I beg to disagree marami pong productions na umaabot ng 20 hours may umaabot pa nga ng 23 hours post-pandemic. Up to now? Yes, Chair. Have you experienced it yourself? Uh, yes, Chair. What production is it? And I've also heard a lot of stories from uh, colleagues in the industry. It's still a practice today. Nakakagulat siya. I'm, I'm a bit surprised. Kala ko, hindi na natin na uh, inaabuso itong mga artista natin. Yes, you are... Yes, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, ako po si Titi Villanueva, galing po ako sa Philippine Theater Actors Guild at naranasan ko na rin pong um, magtrabaho sa pelikula at saka sa telebisyon. Um, masasabi ko pong isa po sa mga representatives na mga umaarte po sa uh, telebisyon at pelikula na hindi po kami sikat. Uh, so, usually po kami pong mga taga-teatro, um, we play supporting roles, naranasan na rin po ng karamihan sa amin na maging um, mga uh, supporting characters or talent masa- masasabi ko na rin po at nakita ko po na nararanas um, sorry po ah, nararanasan po ng mga tao na um tagahanap po ng sariling mga standby area um kahit po post pandemic um and ang mga taong ito um na witness ko na rin pong merong mga talent na nahihimatay dahil bilad na bilad po sa ilalim ng araw uh, habang nagtitake ang isang mahabang eksena. Um, naawa po ako sa mga kasamahan ko dahil uh, gusto lang po naman ng mga taong magtrabaho ng maayos. And I agree with um, what um, Miss Dolly is saying na umaabot po talaga ng more than 20 hours ang pagtatrabaho. Um, usually po, Uh, when, well, now that we're on the topic of um, kung ano pa yung mga karanasan ng mga tao um, sa health standards din po, naririnig ko po na sinasabi ng mga tao meron pong mga um, health officers on site. But personally, um, meron din pong mga kwento. Siyempre, hindi po nababalita kasi hindi naman po sikat. Usually, yung mga naaaksidente. Um, meron pong mga taong... Um, When it comes to special effects, for example, may nasunog yung buhok ng isang double, um, hindi naman po na babalita iyon. Um, kapag meron pong isang artista na na-aksidente dahil sa um, hindi maayos na fly system, hindi rin po na ibabalita iyon at hindi po na ire-report. Um, if you'd allow me, Mr. Chairman, I would like to share something on our statement from the Philippine Theater Actors Guild regarding safety and health regulations. Okay. On the section concerning health and safety, here's our request, our recommendation. There has to be emphasis on ensuring safety regarding the usage of special equipment, stunts, and special effects. Since there have been countless incidents wherein individuals on set have been put in harm's way, this is often a practice in the theater scene wherein the introduction of new props and equipment happens during rehearsals so that when the show fi- finally opens, everyone in the company is confident that they have taken the necessary precautions and preparations to ensure everyone's safety. Unfortunately, in the film and television scene, this is not a common practice for all production houses. 
There have been instances wherein makeshift equipment have been used in the spirit of resourcefulness. While being resourceful is a very Filipino way of working, we believe that securing proper equipment should be required to ensure maximum safety. There should be professionals present on set to oversee the usage and handling of the special equipment aside from the production safety officer. We have to recognize the fact that the production safety officers have other responsibilities already and may, and may not be equipped to handle specific special equipment involved in special effects and stunts. This must be taken into consideration because there have been shoots that only have a production safety officer present and for special shoots, this is not enough. There must be a professional whose sole responsibility is to ensure the proper usage and handling of special equipment. Scenes involving stunts, special effects, and or special equipment like fly systems must be introduced to the actors and crew members involved in the scene ahead of the target shooting dates so as to prepare them physically, mentally, and emotionally for the demands of the work that they have to do. If additional training is needed, the employer must hire proper teachers and professionals, and they should provide adequate time for the actors involved to be trained properly so that they are prepared, confident, knowledgeable, and well-equipped way before stepping on set. Hiring professionals should not be an afterthought. We cannot wing it when the welfare and safety of workers are on the line. Consent should also be given importance when it comes to participation in sensitive and or potentially life-threatening scenes. If an employer cannot provide the proper safety measures for, for special shoots involving stunts, special effects, and special equipment, Safer alternatives must be used. The lives and safety of workers must not be put at risk just to get the perfect shot. We are hoping that our recommendation on health and safety be considered and emphasized since it is an important aspect concerning our workers' welfare that is often overlooked and taken for granted. Tag PH looks forward to seeing this bill enacted into law and we are also looking forward to future bills and laws in support of the welfare and safety of workers in the theater industry in the country. We know that with the Eddie Garcia law, the nation is ta taking a step forward into creating a safe space for our workers in the creative industry. Tag PH pledges our commitment to being partners in further nation building through the arts. Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat. Thank you, uh, Ms. Uh... Villanueva. Anyway, going back to Ms. Dali de Leon, your revelation is quite uh, disturbing. No? Uh, you're made to work for 23 hours straight. Am I correct? Yes, is that Mr. what Chair. you were saying? Yes, Mr. Chair. Have you experienced Chair. it personally? Yes, Mr. Chair. Post-pandemic. Okay. 20, 23 hours straight. Meron kayong tulugan doon? Meron naman po. Nakakatulog naman kayo. Mayos naman po yung tulog. Nakakatulog naman Nakakatulog po. Nakakatulog kayo ilang oras out of the 23 hours. Opo, nakakasingit ng tulog. Then, pagka time mo, nagigigsingin ka, Opo. o ikaw na. Yes. Tapos magre-retouch ka pa. Yes. Tama? Exactly. Opo. Tapos, pagkatapos yung eksena, tulog ka ulit. Kung ka ulit. minsan po hindi man nakakatulog ulit dahil yung adrenaline medyo mataas pa, so hindi madalas Lalo na nakakatulog. Lalo na pag-drama. Opo. Pag drama po, bumabagsak ang energy, hindi po pwedeng matulog lagi. Mm -hmm. Lalo na pag crying scene. Opo, pag crying scene or lalo na kung malaki po yung, yung role natin sa pelikula or sa serye, madalas kaming nakasalang. So, minsan po talagang the whole time gising kami. Mamaya pwede tayo mag-usap at ibulong mo sa akin kung sino yung producer na, <laughs> na nagpapatrabaho sa dyan ng 23 hours straight. Hindi lang po yung producer na yung experience ko po, uh, Mr. Chair. Marami po akong nakakausap na until now, practice pa rin po yun talaga. No? Maabot minsan ng 20 o. Ayaw may bulgar dito. Ayoko po. Kasi baka po, uh, uh, hindi po. Ayaw, wala, lang, wala lang kumuha sa'yo. Hindi ho, okay lang po kahit wala na pong kumuha sa akin. Mas importante po sa akin na maipasa na po ito in tulo. Hindi yes. po yun. I just no, don't want because to. If this, will, if this Eddie Garcia will be enacted in tulo, we will never allow that to happen. Yes. That that is an assurance coming from me, coming from the members of uh, the Senate, including the members of the uh, movie industry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you.
Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, as input lang uh, bilang paglilinaw po, uh, susugan ko po yung sinabi ni Mr. Res Cortes kanina. Ang normal working hours po talaga sa ating bansa ay walong oras. Yun po yung normal. Dahil po normal yun, yun po ay nakabase sa isang standard. Kasi ang standard po ng Pero, ilang... Nasa batas na yun, di ba? Eight Apo. hours. Kaya po ginawang standard yun kasi yun po yung kakayahan ng isang katawan na magtra magtrabaho ng produktibo. So mm -hmm. dapat po, Mr. Chair, wag po natin gawing normal yung magtrabaho ng 12 hours, 14 hours, but, or 8, 18 yes. hours. Pwede uh, po natin gawin yun as an exception to the general rule, taking into consideration the nuances ng isang industry. So, nuances uh, of? Of the industry po, yes. Mr. Chair. Of the entertainment po, industry. Yes, Mr. Right. Chair. Kaya gusto ko lang pong i-reiterate na meron pong pinanggagalingan yung walong oras na normal working mm. hours. At yun po ang normal. Sa ordinaryo mang gagawa. Opo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pero dito sa larangan ng pelikula, industriya, kasi syempre kabisado namin lahat yun, hindi naman pa pwede walang oras lang. Opo. Kaya po, uh, tinatanggap po namin yung mga ganitong uh, panukalang batas. So, sa, sa inyong palagay, uh, sa dole, Ilan oras dapat? Well, uh, walong oras po talaga. No, no, no. no. Because the in film industry is a unique industry. Uh, no, Pwedeng eight hours lang. Una po Malulugi namin, yung mga producers okay. niyan. Una po namin, Trinay, na-regulate yung working hours ng audiovisual industry noong 2020 kung saan nag-set po kami ng maximum number of working hours ng 16 hours po. Ito po ay sa pamamagitan ng isang joint memorandum circular. Okay. Pero mas mapapalakas po natin ito kung meron po tayong tinutungtungang batas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kasi, kasi narinig na natin yung mga statements na yung mga, sa, sa mga artista, sa mga producers, parang ang standard working hours nila, 14. Okay na ba kayo sa 14? 14 hours? Okay na okay po kami doon, Mr. Chair. Excluding the travel time, ha? Correct. Opo. Excluding, ah? Inclusive lang po of rest, meals, yes. setup, ingress, egress, hair and makeup. Hair and makeup, correct. Pati hair and makeup. Opo, Opo sir. Paano yung mag, matagal mag-makeup? Sabihin nyo sa makeup na, artist nyo, tagalan nyo, tagalan nyo. Hindi po, <laughs> po dapat yun. Uh, dapat po ibilisan. Sir, hindi ba kayo pagpunta nyo sa set, hindi ba naka-makeup na kayo? Wala. Hindi po normally ganun, pero ngayon po, pagkatapos po nito, didiretso ako sa set na ka-makeup na. Pero normally po, dumadating po ako, wala pa pong makeup. Eh, paano pag may eksena, kailan ng prosthetics? Yun po ay isang... Yun, medyo matagal yun. Matagal pa po, kasi paano po kung halimbawa, isa kang puno that day, or kung ano man ang character mo that day, wakin bordado ka that day, ilang oras ang naging makeup time. Paano, inclusive yun. Pa inclusive yun. Dapat po ay inclusive. Huh? Or siguro po, isa... May tripartite naman, tripartite naman po na mangyayari. Pwede po sigurong pag-usapan yan. Very Siguro specific pwede niyo pag-usapan yan internally kasi Ay, matagal naman talaga yung pagkabit ng mga prosthetics. No? Kasi na, minsan naranasan ko rin yan. No? Yeah. Yeah, you were raising your hand. You are... Sandali lang. Mr. Generoso. Uh, Sandali lang. Is that in connection with you? Oh, sige, pubigyan muna natin siya. Okay. Sir. Uh, sir, I'm Aero Francisco. Also, I'm representing the Production Designer Circle of the Philippines. Mm. So, yung pinag-uusapan po natin is hair and makeup, uh, set design. So, kung gano'n po katagal yung paggawa ng makeup, kung inclusive po, it should be included po. So, since as a production designer, uh, under po siya ng responsibility namin. So, I believe kailangan po siya isama because actually, pag nag-start na po yung makeup, nagtatrabaho na po yung team actually. So, dapat kasama na po siya sa kung 14 hours po ito, kasama na po yun doon. Kasi even so, uh, yung for, particularly for my team, nauuna po talaga kami pumunta on set. And nauuna po kami mag-prepare ng mga gamit ng actors, damit po nila, and etc. po. Yun lang po, uh, Chair. Makeup artist ka, ano? Huh? Uh, production designer A po. Production designer, okay. Yeah, Mr. Villanueva. Uh, magandang araw po. Uh, sa, sa hanay naman po namin ng mga mga manggagawa sa likod ng kamera. At amin pong minumungkahin na yung kung 14 hours man yung mapag-agreean, dapat po kasama na yung travel time o yung pull out sa, sa base. Kasi like sa amin kasi, uh, yung, yung kumukuha pa sila ng gamit. Kumukuha pa sila ng gamit at the same time, 
Uh, pagkatapos naman ng taping, nagbabaklas pa sila. Tapos isosoli ulit nila yon. So, sa aming palagay po, uh, dahil kontrolado na sila ng kumpanya, uh, dapat po kasama na po yung, yung travel time or pull-out time at uh, pack-up time dun sa, sa magiging kung ano man yung mga pag na oras. Oras ng trabaho. Oh, ano masasabi ng mga producers doon? JMA7, ABS. Yung minumong kahit ni Mr. Villanueva. Oh, ano, ano, what are you presenting? Ano? Oh, uh, what is the concept of Union President and also ABS-7 Employees Union? Okay. Hmm. Uh, that's the message here. Kaya tayo dito, we will strike a balance. no? We will have to strike a balance. Yan nga para hindi naman argabayado yung mga producers, hindi argabayado yung mga mga workers sa uh, film industry, mga artista, yung mga nasa likod ng camera. Susubukan natin para we will really strike a balance para walang argabayado rito. Opo. Yan, okay. yan nga po, Mr. Chair, yung isa sa mga nuances na binabanggit namin. Kasi sa industry natin, hindi lahat ng manggagawa ay sabay-sabay nagsisimula ng alas otso. Tulad sila, nagsisimula sila pagdating nila sa uh, sa site. Actually, may punto siya. May, may, may punto so siya. sila, sisimu, tatapapatak na yung oras nil, nung 14 nila, nung 14 hours nila. Samantalang yung ating mga talents na dadating lang doon sa location, doon pa lang papatak yung 14. So, as uh, producers, nahihirapan din sila na i-balance yung 14. Tapos ito pa, uh, they are regular employees. So, so you, you better give me a solution how to solve this problem. What are the solutions that uh, you want to propose? Well, for, for GMA41, for uh, we are trying to do two shifts. Kasi di ba yung mga tabahador namin manggagaling sa site. So may isang shift na re-relyebo para hindi sila sumosobra sa 14 hours. Mm -hmm. Pero it's very costly kasi dalawang biyahe. Very costly on oh, your part. Opo, opo. Yes, as producers. Uh, yes, opo. Yes, so, yes, yeah, binabalanse talaga. Mm -hmm. Or hindi na lang lumalayo. Dito na lang yung location. So nababawasan naman yung creativity naman ng ating mga ano, creatives. So yun yung give and take lang na nire-request nga na sana namin na mabalanse din po. Dahil, of course, we... We are also for the no, uh, health of the workers po. Yeah. Dahil kapati so, naman kami ng mga workers. So, can you offer any, solu uh, any solution to that uh, to, the, to this uh, problem? Well, internally nga po, kung talagang magle-legislate po tayo ng 14 hours or 16 hours, the the producers, the employers will uh, will be forced to uh, to adhere to it and of course to do shifting and mag incur ng additional cost. Ngayon, kung hindi ko alam kung saan nila ipapatong yung additional cost or ibabawas. Kasi we have to stipulate this Opo. in the law. Kasi we, we also have to protect them. Hindi lang man, mga artista pero protection natin, natin dito, kundi yung mga maliliit, yung mga nasa likod ng camera. Okay? Can you give me, can you submit a position paper within the week? Okay? Mr. Chair, can, um, I apologize. Can, can we request more time because when we create the position paper, we have to submit it to our owners pa for their so clearance. How many, how many days? How many weeks? Wag naman, kasi uh, we will... Can we, we be given... Congress will adjourn, will adjourn on September 30. October, buong October, wala kaming session dito. We'll, we'll be back on November, a budget hearing na yun. Mr. Chair, can we ask for 15 working days? 15 working days? Yes, Mr. Chair, please. Because we have to submit it Kasi to our owners. Kasi malakong ipasa to bago matapos ang taon eh. Pagka 15 working days, hindi natin, baka mabitin. 10 working days, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> we apologize, Mr. Chair. But 7 na lang. <laughs> One week na lang. Working days, yes. Huh? 7 working days, Mr. Chair. Pwede na. Yes, Kasi Mr. Chair. We have to stipulate this. Uh, we have to incorporate this eh. Hindi sa batas. Ah, Thank you, Mr. Parang lang, wala silang... Ano. We'll work with seven working right. days, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mer pa bang mga... James? Yes, direct, Mark. S sir, this is a practice that we used to do noon sa advertising. Pag out of town, mayroong out of town, right? So may, may 0.5 na half a day's pay travel time na si Punta ka ng Baguio. You still get paid half a day. Ngayon, kung sa Metro Manila, because of the traffic and everything... 
I it can be consider can we consider na pwede bang uh, a fraction of per their per hour day's pay will be paid as travel time. Parang kumbaga hindi kasi pa nag-pull out yung yung camera, uh, yung camera team for example, nagtatrabaho na sila. Pero ang sasabihin ng producer, pero pag nagbiyahe ka naman mula sa studio hanggang antipol, hindi ka naman nagtatrabaho eh. Pero dapat, may ano pa rin yun, may, may compensation pa rin yun. Not necessarily the, the equivalent of a fan. Pero yun yung problema kasi wala tayong, dahil uh, ang agreement is walang overtime fix. Ano. Pero I think the production crew, uh, especially sila yung from... Um, uh, from pull out uh, to ano uh, from call time to pack up sila yung nagtatrabaho eh so if we could compute i don't know uh, a fraction of their per hour rate uh para lang may compensation yung additional time yung travel time kung lalagpas ng metro manila maybe we will have to wait for the uh, position papers yeah. of uh, the uh, producers siguro pwede pwede kayo mag konsultahan ng mga people behind the camera tungkol sa issue na yan? Okay ba sa inyo? Or we can inform our, since we're organized, we can also tell our union to submit a position paper if necessary, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We can inform them. Yeah. Do you have direct mark? Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, yung sinasabi ng uh, TV network na shifting Nangyayari ngayon yon, But the problem is, may shifting yung crew saka yung ibang staff kasi nagag, naging dalawang units. Pero yung artista, wala namang shifting. Kaya humahaba yung working hours namin. So yun ang problema ng shifting. Uh, mas, uh, nagagawa nila yon kasi yung union ng network na yun ay malakas kaya hindi sila pwedeng lumampas sa oras pero yung mga artista and other mga contractual can you, talent can you elaborate bakit humahaba ang eksena pag may shifting hindi de kasi may shift nagsi yung crew nagpapalit okay pero kaming artista kami nandoon pa rin okay, bakit humahaba kung nagpapalit hindi kasi Kunyari, 12 hours yung uh, yung uh, isang set ng crew. O papalit sila. Pero kami, nakalampas ng 12 hours, nandun pa rin kaming artista. Mm-hmm. So yung length of taping, Kumaka yung ba? crew, nagpapalit, pero yung artista, hindi naman nagpapalit. So, What do you propose right now? Sundin lang natin yung uh, kung isiset natin ng 12 hours hanggang 12 hours lang talaga. Hindi, kasi, kasi ang hinihingi nila inclusive of travel time. Ang isang mga artista naman exclusive of travel time. Kaya we will have to strike a balance. Kaya hinihintay ko lang yung hinihintay ko yung mga ang submission ng position papers nitong ating mga... Actually, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, sa lower house, napag-usapan yung mga detalye pagdating na lang ng time na magkikreate ng tripartite para pag-usapan yung mga detalye. Parang travel time is a working time or ang, ang 12 hours starts pag dumating ka na sa set or wala pang nafi-fix na ganon. Okay. At uh, uh, additional information. Uh, nung pandemic, uso yung lock-in, merong cut-off. Even during the pandemic? May yes. Cut-off. Yeah. Okay. Pero nung nitong huli, na. Eh, hindi na. Ang reason nila, sa, diba sabi dapat ko, balikta, dapat during the pandemic, pwedeng tuloy-tuloy dahil na, na, naka-lock-in kayo eh. Hindi, pero ewan ko, naging practice You observed it? Yeah. Ilan hours? Uh, actually, hindi na binibilang yung oras. Basta pagdating ng 12 hours, at uh, 12 midnight. o ng gabi, pakap na. Anong hours kong sisimula? Ma-start yun ng mga 8 or 9? In the morning. 
Yes. Tigil lang alas dos oh. madaling araw. Pero ang naging attitude kasi ngayon ng mga producers, ng mga network, eh ba't namin susundin yan? Kasi uh, executive order pa lang naman eh, ng dole. Hindi pa yan batas. Kaya uh, dapat bilisan na natin para wala nang dahilan sila para hindi i-practice or i-implement ang nakalagay sa department order ng dole. So, may experience ka ba after this pandemic na you were you were working 23 hours katulad ng sinabi ni Miss Dali? Yes. Meron pa rin mga pino, ano inoblika kayo na o oh, pinakikiusapan kayo na oh, baka pwede natin Yeah, nakiusap may shooting na sa Cavite at uh, umuulan-ulan kasi so hindi continuous yung shooting. So, Inabot kami ng hanggang umaga. Nakiusap. Nakiusap naman. Walang... At pumayag. Dagdag bayad. At pumayag ako. At pumayag ka. Oh. Yung mga ibang artista. Uh, yung ibang artista, hindi naman nagre-reklamo. Kasi pumapayag din. Hmm. Oh, so, pag hindi kayo pumayag, ano mangyayari? Eh, yung iba, ginagawa, uh, iniiwanan ng set. Nag-walk out. Meron ka ng artista? Meron ka ng hindi mo naman ibubulgar at kung sino artista na. Sasabihin ko. Ha? <laughs> Ikaw, bahala. Gusto mo sabihin. Anyway, hindi naman siguro si Robin Masam- Padilla yun. Meron akong kilala na ganun. Pero, uh, just keep it to yourself. Okay. okay. Oh, meron pa bang naman? Miss, Miss Isa. Chairman, hello. Uh, tungkol lamang po sa naging practice nung pandemia, uh, nag- kami po nung ako po'y gumagawa ng teleserye at proyekto sa ABS-CBN, ang naging standard po ay 12-hour working day. So kung 8 a.m. po kung meron mo rolyo noon, uh, 8 p.m. po ang pack-up. Pero hindi pa po kasama noon ang hair and makeup. Uh, ngayon po, hindi siya, dahil nga po hindi ito isang batas, hindi na po ganun ka-strict ang work hours. Some still adhere to it, katulad nung minsan ako ay kasama nila uh, producer Percy and Talan, uh, in po nila ang work hours. Uh, meron naman din pong naghingi ng extension, gaya po ng nasabi ni Mr. Res Cortez. Um, may isang hiling lang din po kami, uh, Dali, tungkol sa turnaround time. Uh, kung patungkol lang po sa sinabi kanina ni Attorney Joji Alonso, uh, minsan po kasi ay hindi talaga MWF ang nagiging schedule ng isang shoot. Minsan po, nag every day or three days straight, five days straight. Depende po sa pangangailangan at uh, sa schedule ng mga uh, lahat ng involved. So siguro po isang appeal lang na sana i-honor po ang turnaround time para din po may enough hours na makapahinga ang ating, ang lahat po ng bumubuo ng production. Kasi kasama po doon ang travel time. So minsan po kasi before the pandemic, ang mangyayari, halimbawa, same production po, hindi po ito yung segue na tinatawag na oh, tumatanggap ka po yun. Ako po ay guilty doon na minsan dalawa, tatlong proyekto simultaneously ang nangyayari. Pero kung iisang produksyon po, bawa, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday kayo. Doon po sa Wednesday, Thursday, minsan ho, uuwi ka na lang para kumuha ng gamit mo. Ang sana po ang mangyayari ay makauwi ka upang makapagpahinga. Para po uh, pag, uh, sa susunod na araw ay uh, Mentally and physically uh, rested ka. Yun lang po. To add lang po, Chair. So, may cases din po. So, for, for production design team kasi. So, since we prep the sets, most of the time we also construct the sets. So, we we need time to, to, to of course, to set things up. May dumanating po sa times na kailangan namin siya iset up on the day. So, may times sa, uh, na, na magigit naman po ni Attorney Joji na, na nabibigyan kami ng time to set it up. Pero may cases po na sa same day lang namin siya magagawa. And kas- kasama din po din yung pagbaklas nung set para maibalik siya sa dati niyang estado. And at the same time, uh, for for crews like us, may may situations din po wherein, let's say, MWF nga po yung, yung case, kunyari lang. Uh, on rest days, may, may mga meetings pa po yun. So, <laughs> minsan pagkatapos pa po ng pack-up namin, nagmi-meetings pa po. So, 
course, kahit sabihin namin na hindi po kami nagsusuit, nagtatrabaho pa rin naman po kami. Meron pa rin po kaming, uh, gumagana pa rin po yung isip namin in terms of planning, uh, mobilizing our our teams, etc. po. So, I think, uh, I'm not sure if, if kasi ang mandated po right now is 24-hour uh, turnaround time, but I'm thinking baka kailangan po talaga ng more time kasi right now, nagagamit din po yung turnaround time for for pre-production meetings and other things. Yun lang po, Chay. Uh, bawala galang na. Uh, daily, daily bang bayad sa'yo? Bilang production design sa... Uh, yes po, sa akin day. po ay per day po. Per day. Alright. Halimbawa, may big big scene bukas ang isang uh, production. Kailangan mo magtrabaho, kailangan mo iset up dapat ngayon para nakahanda na tomorrow. Yes, po, sir. So, binabayaran ka ng producer. Bayad naman po. Ngayon at bukas. Tama po ba? Uh, well, iba po yung case po ng, ng mga tao ko versus me. Uh, sorry, excuse me. For for my case po, since I'm a department head, na, ang nakasanayan po namin is, uh, mas, mas per day lang po talaga ako. Yung, yung tao ko po ang may pre, kumbaga prep fee po, bayad po sila while they're constructing other things, etc. Per day din? Uh, the, kapag workday po nila, na hindi po shoot. So ako po, bayad, use, most production designers are just paid on shoot days po. Pero relatively bigger. Ano yung mga nagpe-prep? Yung nagpe-prep naman po, naka, may meron silang uh, prep fee. So most of the time, usually uh, about 1,500 po yung bayad sa kanila ranging to about 3,000, mga ganun po, uh, per day po. Pero yun po kasi, ang, ang problem po dun, uh, chair, most of the time, hindi po counted yun as 12 hours or 14 hours. May cases like, kahap, actually, ga, kakagaling ko lang po sa, sa isang setup kahapon. We worked from 8 a.m. to uh, 11 p.m. yesterday. So, dumating ako dito ng puyat actually. So, uh, may ganun pong cases na nangyayari na ang, yung, yung set-up days namin ay hindi siya 12 hours. Yun lang po, Chair. Alright. Uh, meron pa bang nice uh, magbigay ng inputs tukol sa Eddie Garcia? Yes. Mr. Your, Garcia. Your Honor, clarify lang po namin position namin. We, much as we agree with uh, the actors po dun sa 14 hours, for us po, we are count, we're not counting the meal times. Only because hindi namin talaga kontrolado sometimes yung meals. Eh. Like for instance, if we call at 10 a.m., the expectation is by 12 noon, we have to stop. Diba? Pero by that time, nag make pa lang. So for us, it's easier to count. Kasi 14 hours, when you think about it, you're called at 6 a.m., that means by 8 p.m. tapos na. Which we know that in our industry, that's a really short day. 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., not counting meals will really result in very few scenes, no? So I think our compromise lang talaga is that 14, excluding the meals. Tapos, uh, Chair, we also understand, though, that uh, there's a situation where there are uh, individuals whose work really starts from pull-out. Like, for instance, yung nga, the camera crews who pull out the equipment. In our case, in film kasi, it's different from, I guess, in the networks because we we work with the suppliers and the suppliers are the ones in charge of assigning sino yung crew na magpo-pull out ng gamit. And so that's where the shifting happens kasi they start earlier. So they tell us that, oh, by this time, this person will have to go home kasi magpapalit na shift. So that's, I think, maybe when it's reviewed, maybe we can do it on a case-to-case -case basis, recognizing also that even in our industry, each individual has specific needs. Like the production designers also have speci specific needs, diba? That are different from the actor's needs, that are different from the director's needs. So, yun po siguro sa ano na lang, paghimay na lang nung, nung bill. Uh, but uh, we do understand, though, that the best practice is really um, maybe are in the middle ground of what happened during the pandemic. Because there was, there was really some initiative from a lot of producers to put a cap on the number of working hours during the pandemic because we were all afraid that people will get sick. Because during the pandemic, when somebody got sick, got sick in our production, you would stop for four days and put everybody in a hotel for four days. So nobody wanted that to happen. But now, what was good about it is people were conscious. Anybody who falls sick, kahit na humatsing lang yan, takbo na kagad ang medic. Kasi you're paranoid. I mean, of course, we don't want 
to be that paranoid, but there was something good there that came about. We don't we know though that that's not sustainable, because during the pandemic also, I was just explaining uh, to to Direct Carlitos, I had one production where essentially five almost 10% of the production budget went just to safety protocols. And unfortunately, that resulted in a production on screen that did not look big. And we don't want that. We don't want output that does not show the best of what we can do. Diba? So there must be a middle ground. I mean, uh, I re reiterate that as producers, we really welcome this because it also helps us. Because eh? to, be, to be very candid also, if anybody falls sick, it becomes personal money, personal abuloy, personal tulong. So we don't want that also. We don't want people getting sick. Um, and I think, I hope lang, that's something that all producers will bear in mind. Uh, because there should be a middle ground talaga on what can we can afford and what uh, would be right for each individual. Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Percy. Huh? Yes. Sir Mark Villana, uh, Associate with Labor Union's Trade Union Congress of the Philippines. Uh, we appreciate you being a part of this labor because I used to work in the industry too for a good at least 15 years, close to 20 years. So uh, I work both as a contratista as a audio and also occasionally do my productions na ako na direct and ako rin produce sometimes, small ones. Pero naintindihan ko rin yung lugar mo nga bilang producer at yung yung bilang trabaho there. Pero ang problema kasi you have to look at this systematically. systematically. I do know how to deal with your segment of labor. Ang problema nga kasi is yung labor standards within the industry. Maging nilip mo ito yung ano eh. Yung hindi yung regular work na naging yung yung independent contractors, yung project basis yung lahat. Ang problema nga kasi ang pinada dito yung the lowest work, the workers, the lowest of the total sa production na kung saan yung so, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, eight hours work, eight hours rest, and eight hours to do as you need to, you, as you must, you, with your family or, you know, education, kung ano man you want to do with the eight hours na extra. Pero naging problema nga kasi, yeah, we understand the nature of this business, it takes long hours, you know. Pero ang problem nga kasi is, ano eh, mas pag yung katawan ng mag trabahador yung hindi sustainable yung araw-araw yung gawin. Ang problema kasi, uh, yung kasi nga yung naging precarious na support, uh, incentivizes din yung behavior na ano na you tend to seek to independent contractor ka, you tend to seek more jobs within those days na uh, hindi ka fill. Pero ang problema kasi you can't do it every day. Then kasi nga, pag naman ng work hours mo, mabilis ng 60 hours, Yung nagbalang 25 hours yun, wrap. So, ang nagiging pakipag-pinans na dito is yun. And it has to be reconciled across you, the uh, set of aggregation bills and the set of mass media workers bills. Na yung, uh, yung compromise is 8 hours maximum, but uh, it working hours uh, working hours and 12 hours maximum for each day. Pero dapat you have to, you have to have rules then within yung, yung kung gano'ng katagal yung stretch yun. Like I said, you can't have more than 60 hours in a week. Hindi mo pwede ka yung week on week yun. Yung yung nangirap eh. So, you have to look at this systematically rin na you also have to strengthen yung yung security of the rules dito. Particularly yung kanyang six-month regularization na pinag-uusapan. Ito yung tingin na pinag-uusapan ka. Like I said, ang problema that probably the production outfits or companies that would work around the law na hiring people for like two months lang when that's it. So, hindi talaga makakati ng regularity yung worker dapat maging normal. So, you have to strengthen those parts of the law too. And then yung social protections, you also have to strengthen. Like, kunyari yung overtime pay. Ano ba yung fair at ito? Kunyari, is it fair to pay Yung, yung, yung dapat clear din eh. Kung narin nakasundat doon sa draft na yun is 25% of what, what of it? The days will just na yung extra 4 hours is worth just 25% or is it something like you could do a operated hour with a little bit of extra? So yung fair. Dahil kasi para rin motivated na to keep things efficient on the set na eight hours if you can. And, Kung nalampas ka ng 12 hours na nga. 
So, dapat yung hatulog ka din systematically. Pero may ano, yung hazard papers. Na kung nga, 500 pesos lang yung kalagay dito. Pero, hindi siya yung inflation proof. Imagine kung kaya kung mga 500 pesos is natin. So, you have to set those terms in terms of your main daily wage rate, percentage of it. You have to be careful about those things. Like, kasi, mali, especially sa mga workers na may undertaking term. Sila yung pinaka magbibigay ng brand ng problema eh. Mr. Chair, pwede makasingit? So, yan. Thank you. Okay. Um, Senator, right. usapan natin yung pelikula, no? Mayroon ako gusto isingit. Um, sana, sa mga production company, maawa din kayo sa mga extra. Kasi, nababalitaan ko na napakalinit lang po, Mr. Chair, ang pinapasweldo o binibigay doon sa mga extra. And yet, sila yung nag-aantay for so many hours, sometimes up to 16 hours bago sila may lang at matatanggap lang ang nila is 800 to 1,000 pesos. Ano po dapat Rafi, ang babaguhin sistema? Dati po yung in terms sa mga extra, dati tawag natin extra o tri-ex. Ngayon, talent na. Oh, talent. Okay. Doon po, sa, sorry. Doon po sa mga talent, dapat magkaroon tayo ng patakaran kung magkano, ano yung narapat na ibigay sa kanila. Yes. Uh, sila ay hindi pwede maging regular dahil talent sila. Pero sana i-consider din natin na naghihirap sila, nagmumukha silang kawawa, na ulanan, na initan din, at nag-aantay na pagkatagal-tagal, nagugutom. Kung kailangan darating yung main character, eh saka pa lang sila may isasalang. So kawawa naman sila. May mga pamilya din ito. At karamihan sa kanila, nabubuhay lamang sa pagiging talent. So we should also bear in mind na dapat itong mga ito sila ay bigyan ng magandang konsiderasyon. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Rafi. In conjunction with uh, what Senator Tulfo mentioned, how do you treat your talents? Ganun din, 8 hours or uh, 12 hours? Sa mga producers, if I may ask. Uh, siguro, uh, Mr. In in uh, Percy, how do you treat your talents? It's the same, uh, Your Honor. Kung ano yung working hours of everybody, ganun din yun sa talents pa. Ganun din. Ganun din sa mga artista. Yes, pa. Alright. Ganun din kayo. Similar din, Mr. Chair. Except that uh, wala lang sila nung uh, overtime like for regular employees kasi nga talent sila. So, their compensation is based more on the contract, the talent agreement that they sign. At so, meron kayong talent agreement? Opo. Ano nakasaad? What is stipulated there? Ah, yung engagement po, yung program, tsaka yung rate po nila. And uh, yung responsibility. Pero ba ang rates ng mga talents? Iba-iba? Hindi po, Mr. Chair. Uh, depende po sa ano. Sa, sa bigat? Sa bigat ng talent. Sa galing okay. or sa tagal sa industriya po. May mga ganun po eh. Mr. Chair, yeah. wala, wala bang standard na bayad sa mga talent yung pinaka-minimum? Wala bang ganun na sinusunod na industriya? Ano yung minimum base pay ninyo sa talents? Yung kunwari, yung ano lang, yung pinapaningan lang ng camera. Yes. Ayan. Kasi, uh, Senator Rafi, merong iba't ibang degree mga talents. Mga, kunwari, uh, may drama, syempre mas mabigat, mas ma, may mga dialogue, mga iba, ano lang. Kasi, Mr. Chair, ako naging extra din noon eh, panahon. Yung sa Chuck mm -hmm. Norris movie, nagkantay ako almost 16 hours, ang binay sa akin, matagal na to, 200 pesos. 16 hours. Mag-antay ako. <laughs> Totoo yan. Eh, ngayon, I don't know. Dapat merong standard. Yeah. Na magkano yung minimum minimum, minimum. pili ninyo sa, 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 sa mga talents? If I may ask, kung sino pwede sumagot? Yeah. Attorney Joji. Um, in our case po, Mr. Senator, it depends if the, our, the, the talent or the extra has lines. Yeah. Yung mga, yung, yung wala. Yung, Yung wala dialogue? 1,500 to 2,000 po. Ah, yung wala dialogue, ha? Yes po. Ah, yung pinapaningan lang, ganun. Yes po. Oh. But the problem actually, sir, um, as mentioned by Senator Tulfo earlier, is not with us paying the talents, but those who provide the talents. Kasi yung talent supplier po, ang laki ng komisyon nila. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so, magkano yung pinakamalaking vibe ninyo sa sa talent, yung mga may dialogue or whatever. Pag class A po. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, sandali, sandali, Attorney Joji. How do you classify 
Like, the talents. Para you classify na like may class A, may class B. Yes po. Like like for example, somebody who can act like a doctor. All right. Shayo. I mean, meron meron talaga siyang role, but it's not as big for I mean, it's not big enough for us to spend a lot of money to pay an actor who will make singel higher. So, we we cast a class A okay. talent. Okay. Magkano binabayad niyo sa class A? 5,000 po. Per day. Yes po. Okay. How do you classify the one class B? <laughs> Paano ba? Ilang classes ba ito? Um, Actually, internal. Ano lang yun? Parang internal talk lang kasi yan, sir. Okay. May class A, class B, class C. Yung class C kasi yun lang talaga yung dumadaan, okay. naglalakad. Pinapaningan lang. Yes po. Mm -hmm. They don't really... It's 1,000 yun. 1,500 po. 1,500. Yung one class B, mga 3,000. 3,000. Yes po. Okay. And then 5,000, yung talagang nagla-lines at marunong umarte. Pero you, you still observe the working hours? Yes po. Hindi sila pinaghihintay ng katulad ng 23 hours? Hindi, no? Ano yung call time? Actually, in our case, we even adjust. Like, hindi pa namin sila kailangan, so we call them at a later time. So sometimes right. they don't have to spend that many hours. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, contradicting itong mga sinasabi ni Ma'am in Talan, doon sa mga nakakausap ko ng mga talent. Si Attorney Georgie ito. Uh, Attorney Georgie, sorry Ma'am. Georgie. Uh, Attorney Georgie, sorry. Kasi marami ng mga talent na malapit sa akin noon pa nagsusumbong. Ang tagal-tagal ng pag-antay nila, call time nila halimbawa sinabi 7 o'clock in the morning, nandun na sila 7 o'clock. And then, isasalang sila 7 o'clock na ng gabi o kinabukasan na in some cases. Ang, ang request ko lang, well, nagsusumbong po sa akin yun. Wala naman siguro silang reason magsinungaling. Ano po? In fact, they don't want to be mentioned and they don't, although may mga pangalan binigay sa akin ng mga pelikula or, or company or uh, Uh, network, TV network. Yung, yung sa akin lang sana dito, Mr. Chair, okay, sinabi niyo po, may problema doon sa uh, nagpo-provide ng talent sa agency. So, pwede niyo siguro ng diktahan from now on, Mr. Chair, gagawa tayo ng batas na dapat mis, may take home to isang talent na hindi nababa sa ganitong amount. Pwede ito na as, hindi pwede bumaba. Kasi kung sinasabi niya, depende na doon sa agency, paano kung tinaga ng gusto ng yung talent ng agency na matitake kung pwede lang is 500, tapos 1,000 pa lang binigay, pinuloy sa'yo 1,000, dapat may kasulatan o may batas tayo na kailangan hindi bababa sa ganitong amount ay matitake kung pwede ng isang talent na nagbabad po so many, many hours bago siya maisa lang. Okay. Um... Uh, makasingit lang, Senator Rafi. At tanong ko lang, Attorney Joji, halimbawa, napunta niya yung mga talent sa set, tapos biglang umulan, o force majeure, o nagkabagyo, o nagkalindol, nagcancel. Halimbawa, yung shooting, binabayaran niya yung talents. Yes po, we pay in full. Full. In our case, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and some of my co-producers. That's what we do. What about the major networks? Set na kasi sila. Say, say Mr. Chair. Bayad din po sila, Mr. Chair. Bayad in full. Apa? Sino? Um, <laughs> um, based on experience din po ito na nagkaroon din po ng incident wherein bumagyo po ng malakas, nakasalang na, pa, na, nakasalang na po kami on set, nandyan na po lahat ng actors, nandyan na rin po lahat ng talents. Um, nung lumakas ng lumakas yung ulan, kinailangan po namin i-cancel yung shoot. Yes. Um, by the end of our full shoot, um, yung bayaran na po, um, sinubukan po na yung araw na na-cancel po yung shoot dahil sa bagyo. Sinubukan po na 50% lang po yung ibabayad sa mga tao. Uh, yan po. Sinubukan po. Pero, Sinubukan, Nino? Um, ng... Sirs. Apo, ah, apo. Uh, so, siyempre, kinakausap, kinakausap, I'm, I'm talking about the movie producers. Nakikiusap sa mga talents na, kalimbawa, na-cancel yung shoot, 50% na lang, o you pay them in full? Ang default po kasi pag on set na paid in full na eh. But full. Um, but uh, Chairman, I, uh, Your Honor, I guess if there there might be some producers na siguro talagang tight time budget, maybe they negotiate. Pero if the, kami at least, we haven't that, had that experience. Siguro upon recommendation of Senator Rafi, siguro we can also 
stipulate that into law, no? Yes. Yes, uh, well, as uh, ako nag, nag, uh, I had a, a, an acting role in, in a teleserial last year. Um, ang, there was a day or there were one or two days na hindi, ano ta? Uh, hindi na, um, I mean, hindi ako nakunan, um, but I was paid in full. I was paid in full. Much more than yeah. Hindi na kunan, tapos... Because in Japan for uh, yeah I can't remember it was a teleserye or a movie hindi ko na or streaming series pero pero ganun nangyari hindi ako nabayaran hindi ano nabayaran ako even if hindi ako nakunan because it was uh, I was there already na meron nang naka-signature na, na uh, you know there was proof of uh, presence on the set I was there on the call tapos uh, I was paid in sure. good for you pwede mo yeah. kasi ito right okay so number one, sana gagawa tayo ng batas na para merong take home pay na hindi bababa sa certain amount, na hindi naman mukhang kawawa yung talent. Okay. Then, number two. Uh, meron bang insurance na binibili ang isang production company para pag minaksidente doon sa uh, taping sa lugar na yun, yun ay magbabayad. Kasi may mga pagkakataon, again, may nagsumbong sa akin, natapilok o nagasgas yung kanyang braso na dulas kasi siyempre wala silang coverage natural lang dahil talent lang sila dahil paminsan-minsan lang yung pag sa kanila sana man lang eh, merong insurance medical o dili kaya pag may nangyari tulad sa mga stuntman eh dapat merong perang pinansyal na may bibigay sa kanila do we have that right now in place kayo po nasa show Bersi <laughs> Your Honor, kami po, um, be, ano rin, we, we practice na meron travel and uh, accident insurance kasi wala tayong production insurance talaga. But travel meaning from, kasi a lot of the, unfortunately, there were a lot of accidents na traveling to and from the set. So we applied that. Tapos, and uh, all your talents? Yes po. Covered po everybody on the, in the roster, meaning staff, cast, crew. Pag yung nasa set. Apa, may accident insurance na rin po. Okay, good. How about the other production company? Ayan. Well, maybe the major networks, ABS and GMA. Hi, Mr. Chair. For uh, employees, we have uh, insurance. For talents po, basta magkaroon ng accident or ano, sinasagot naman po ni GMA. Pero it's not uh, through insurance, but through the ano, personal money. In full? Opo. Basta po yung accident happened during... Meron bang incident na nangyari na may accident na talent? At not, uh, not, of po, on, not of recently po. Based on kanina po. Yun po ang problema, Mr. Chair. Eh. So, discretion lang po ano may ari. Thank you for your generosity. Natutulungan niyo po yung na-accidente. So, pero dapat eh, hindi. Eh. Meron talaga agad matik na sasagot. Dahil kung uh, tutulungan niyo... Ang discretion nyo, kailang magmakaawa pa yung talent, pabalik-balik. Kung minsan, pupunta dyan, wala yung pipirma ng check eh. Kung minsan, absent yung magbibigay ng pera. So, he or she is at the mercy of those persons na kailang ang magdi-decide kung magkano yung bibigay at kailang bibigyan. So, dapat meron talaga na insurance o health insurance man lang, group insurance siguro, I don't know, that's supposed to be a, a special coverage na bibili nyo para doon sa inyong taping na kunyari may nasugatan doon, may nangyari doon, matik na pwedeng gagamutin ka at ang babae yung insurance para hindi na balik-balik si talent doon sa inyong tanggapan at magmamakaawa na kuminsan sinasarahan pa ng pinto. Diba? Yung po yung ibig, if, if you know what I mean, if you know where I'm coming from. So, dapat Mr. Chair, ganon. Alright. Siguro, uh, We'll take that uh, into consideration and we'll have to deliberate it further to call uh, insurance. Mr. Chair? Yes, Attorney Joji. Um, actually, Mr. Chair, during the meeting of the PMPPA, we already discussed this matter of insurance coverage for all our shoots and we have agreed to provide moving forward for all the shoots for all the members of the Philippine Movie Producers Group. Mm-hmm. Okay. Travel and um, accident insurance. Yeah. Sa Thank you. Ah. Doon sa position paper na isasubmit nyo within seven days, pakisada rin yung recommendation ni Senator Rafi with regard to the insurance. Is it yes, okay Mr. with Chair. you? We'll uh -huh. include that in our comment, Mr. Chair. Uh -huh. Tama rin sana, Mr. Chair, life insurance. Kasami life Pero yung mag-group life insurance eh, nabibili. 
para on that per, on certain particular project. Okay, Eddie Garcia, walang life insurance yan, no? Wala insurance. No? Wala po, Mr. Chair. Kasi halimbawa, layo lang sa isang set, hindi inaasahan, walang may gusto, may namatay. Again, of course, tulad ng GM7, alam ko, galante po kayo, tutulong kayo, pero hindi lang po tama yung paging galante lang. Kailangan talaga, meron talaga ang uh, patakaran, protocol na may sasagot na hindi na kailangan pa isang tao, dalawang tao, pipit mo sa check at pabalik-balik doon yung talent. Kailangan, matik, meron na sasagot in case of death. And that's life insurance coverage yeah, because of that group life insurance that binili for every particular project. Nababayaran agad siya, matik, 100,000 ba yan o 200,000 per person. Mr. Chair, okay. yun po yung suggestion ko. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Senator Rafi. Well, so, so matanong ko lang, follow up. So, sa ngayon po, wala kayong life insurance, ano? Uh, or anybody here now, production company, could answer that? Na in case of death, may namatay? Siyempre, Inalasal natin na walang mangyari. Pero kung nangyari yung hindi inaasahan, sabi ko nga, so meron ba life insurance coverage para sa lahat ng mga talent, staff, employee involved doon sa taping for a particular project? May nabibili niyan. Special insurance coverage per project sa mga are, insurance company. Are you, to, nga lang. are you willing to provide a uh, life insurance para sa mga talents? Not only talents, but yung mga major actors. Your Honor. Your Honor, dun po sa what, the insurance that we get, covered po yan. Life. In case of a fatal you know, uh, accident, meron pong may part ng coverage po nila. Anong company po kayo? Mukhang maganda. Sa, uh, ano po? Uh, I did first company po, pero sa PMPPA po. PMPPA. Ah, ah. napakaganda ng na asosasyon nyo. <laughs> Diyan siya po tayo mag-repay. Ano po yun? Totoo? Papa, <laughs> napakagaling sino to? Sir, first seat tala. First seat tala po si Sir Rafi. Galing ka sa TV5. We used to work together sa TV5. Yeah, okay, pamilya ka. Ano sa si Ma'am? Attorney Georgie, love so. Ano so po Quantum Films po, Senator? Ang ganda ng kumpanya niyo. Eh, sige, go doon ka daw. Dapat diyan magpupuntahan yung mga talent. Anyway, are you done, Sir Rafi? I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pagkain. Ang balita ko Ang mga pagkain, ang budget nyo lang, kunwari, malaking eksena, big scene, ang budget nyo para sa isang daka tao. Paano may mga talents? Paano nakakain mga talents? Magkano budget ninyo sa pagkain? Pag may big scene? O isang tao, magkano budget ninyo? More than? Hindi na tayo 100 pesos. 150? Per meal. Um, uh, your, Honor, your Honor, nasa 150 po per meal. 150, Tapos, 150 pesos uh, per, per meal. meal so, parang for every person, 450 to 500 po uh, for the day. Kasi we, we usually Kasi have... Kasi sama na Jetaro, may Jetaro, di ba? Ano po? Yung mean, yung Ay, yung... Yung sak, basta tatlong meals po yung budgeted namin normally. Tapos pag mukhang mahaba yung araw, because right now, hindi kami umaabot sa fourth meal because nga 14 hours lang. Yeah. Pero pag... So, ilang meals, meals po, ang inano niyo? Ang no. budgeted po, tatlo every day. Tanghali, punan... Midnight At saka, na? usually po may breakfast eh. Okay. Uh -huh. Pero pinapakain nyo lahat. Apa. Hindi kaya nagkukulang. Kasi may mga ibang nagre-reklamo, hindi rin sila pinapakain na maayos. Again. Ang pagkain ba ng lead stars nyo, kapareho rin ang pagkain ng talents? Yes po, Mr. Dapat. Senator. The same food for everybody on our set. Hmm. Kasi nga po, ang walang discrimination. Wala po. Ang prinsipyo okay. ko po kasi, dapat, Nagpa nagpapagod lahat ng tao dapat hindi natin ginugutom pinapakain natin ng ayos mm. so we provide in our case it's breakfast lunch an afternoon snack and an eve uh, and dinner mm -hmm. craft services tayo oh ABS tsaka GMA pareho ba kinakain ng lead actors nyo tsaka sa mga talents Yes, yes, Mr. Mr. Chair. Not unless si talent mismo yung bibili nung ano niya. Pinapakain nyo lahat ng mga talents wala nang naiiwan. Yes, Pati mga driver, mga crew, crew members. Yes, po. Ganun din ba ABS-CBN? Wala nagugutom sa, sa kanila, ha? Mr. Chair, makasingit ulit. Uh, sa taping ba ninyo, lahat na nandito, 
Uh, meron bang presence ng nurse doctor ambulance sa site? Meron, meron. Uh, Sir Tadrafi, meron silang... Thank you, Mr. Doctor. Chair. Okay. Meron bang... I um, based on experience, sir, napapakain naman po lahat ng maayos. Okay. Wala kayo reklamo sa pagkain? Um, talent, supporting cast, okay naman po. Masarap. <laughs> merienda, Mr. Chair. Meron pa? <laughs> merienda. Meron? May merienda raw ba? Wala. Uh, depende po sa production company. Kung galante. Sino yung galante production outfit? Wag ka maya, sabihin mo na. Uh, chairman, okay lang. Sige, sige. Kasi ma'am titin, ang mahalaga sa amin yung mga maliliit eh. Kasi yung mga big star may pera yan eh. Uh, you actually, kaya naman kami nagkagandala la iti dito para dun sa maliliit. Kasi yung big star, may bilhin pagkain niya. Pag nililigaw mo pa yung leading lady, di ba, dala ka pa. Di ba? Eh, Sanay na sanay ka. Aral ako kay Jingoy. Lalo, lalo pag nasa location eh, no? nilalayo mo. No? <laughs> Ma'am Titi, hindi ha. Yun po. So, napaka-importante po nung inyong opinion. Opo, sana medyo kung gusto nyong bumigay talaga ng malakas na suntok, bigay mo na. O, ano? ano. Uh, kung, kung in terms of budget, sir, importante din po talaga siguro na uh, mag-alot ng specific budget for the food of everyone and um, yung provisions ng kung ano po ba yung uh, masustansya at uh, yung makakain po ng mga tao na para magawa namin lahat ng mga trabaho namin ng maayos. Yun, yun lang naman po. Yun. Uh, Ma'am, sa atin pong mga producer, meron po tayong dietitian naman ano, para sa kakainin ng mga tao. No? <laughs> Ganda yung punto na yun. Nagpuyat, nagpuyat ka na. Tapos papakainin ka ng isang bakol lang na upo. Medyo hirap naman. In our case po, we we tell the caterer kung ano po yung choices namin for the day. We make it balanced. Like, hindi pwedeng puro baboy. Kailangan may may seafood, may may chicken, may, may choices. And then we also ask in advance if there are certain diet preferences in the set. So, if there are certain people na vegetarian, so nagpapaluto rin kami ng pure vegetarian. Kanin ninyo tinatanong, baka sa mga artista? Hindi po, sa lahat po. They, they, they're asked before they, when we hire them, kayo ba may mga dietary uh, preferences? Sa mga talent agencies? Yes. Okay. Kasi some uh, bawal mag-pork, so we don't uh, especially really yung... <laughs> pork. Hmm. Uh. Uh, yung araan ko lang po. Ano kasi merong, kumbaga may base na basta lahat may pagkain na ganito. And then usually nagdadagdag eh. Kaya po, kaya siguro merong nasasabing, oh, may, may special food. Kasi may nagdala ng extra or may nag-order ng extra. Tapos po, uh, yan, Senator Robin, kumbaga, kung merong uh, kailangan ng halal food, kailangan, yun yung rule namin eh, na kung kailangan, kailangan action na natin, gawa natin ang paraan na meron. Kasi sometimes you don't even have to order it in advance, pwedeng on the day. Ang nalaman mo, di pabili ka na lang. Diba? Yan pa. Okay. Oh, Ma'am, Ma'am Titin, okay ba siya yung sagot? Apo. Huwag kang ano, nandito kami. Nahihain siya, no? Sa ating mga artista, wala na po kayong idadagdag doon sa pagkain. <laughs> Ima, katulad nga na sinabi mo, may mga pera yan. Pwede bumili sa ano yan. May leading <laughs> sa restaurant. Ma'am, <laughs> sa pagkain po, kasi sabi nyo kanina, fresh meals. Bakit man nasabi yung... <laughs> Ikaw muna. Ako muna. Okay. <laughs> Napaka-specific ko po kasi dahil mahigit 15 years na siguro nagdadala talaga ako ng sarili kong pagkain. Pero syempre po, inoobserbahan ko ang pagkain ng ibang tao. Uh, depende po talaga sa production at and I will not name any production kung sino ang maganda at sino ang hindi maganda ang uh, pag, uh, situation ng pagkain sa set. Pero so far ang nakikita ko, mukha namang... Uh, patas po ang uh, pagkain na ibinibigay sa mga lead actors. Uh, siguro minsan... At, mga lead actors? Uh, lead so, paano... actors wait lang, hindi pa kasi. Okay, hindi pa okay. tapos, Senator. <laughs> sa mga lead actors, at nakikita ko po, yun din po ang ibinibigay sa crew. Minsan po, 
granted, may nakikita akong parang special food, pinagahatian po ng lahat yan, madalas, or kaya po pag may nagdadala ng pagkain na extra sa set. Um, yun po, minsan po may humihingi ng pangalawang serving, nakikita ko rin po yun sa set. Uh, so, uh, sa palagi ko po, maganda, pero sigu ito lang po ah, siguro po, pwede pa po nating pagandahin pa. There's always room for improvement. And kaya po nang nasabi ko, ako po yung nagdadala ng sarili kong pagkain because personally, I want to be on top of my nutrition. Uh, and I wish and I really hope that that is across the board. Hindi ko lang po pwedeng dalhan lagi lahat ng pagkain, pero kung sana po ay laging masustansya ang maihain natin at sana po mas siguro minsan lalo na po pag pagod na pagod ay mas marami pang kasi minsan po kung pagod na pagod sila baka po hindi enough yung isang serving o yung isang cup lamang ng rice so ito po yung isang diskusyon na pwedeng pag-usapan ng lahat Miss Dolly Hindi po ako kagaya ni Miss Isa na nagbabaw ng pagkain kinakain ko pong pagkain ng lahat Ang observation ko naman po ay pare-parehong pinapakain from lead actors down to the talents, crew, pare-pareho yung pagkain. Yun lang minsan, um, hindi sapat, gaya na sabi ni Isa, parang malakas sa kanin ng mga boys natin, di ba po? So, kailangan na mas maraming kanin and minsan hindi nutritious. And in general talaga, actually, hindi talaga ganun kasarap. Uh, pero may mga ilan na talagang known sila sa mag masarap yung pagkain nila. So, it's really something that can be improve, improved on. Okay. Okay, uh, due to the limited time we, that we have today, we will just reschedule the committee hearing on the uh, Major Work Workers' Welfare Act and the Batas Kasambahay Status Report. And uh, I would like to thank all the... Well, I think we will just uh, ask for their uh, uh, the report, and we will pinapasubmit pinapas submit ko sila ng report sa committee. Okay, mara kapos bin. Ah, uh, sige, Mr. Chair. So, so kung iso suspend mo na ito. Yeah, I will just suspend this uh, okay. hearing today. The next hearing na lang. Yes, okay. uh, uh, thank you for all the resource persons who came here today. At uh, I will, uh, the secretary is hereby instructed to co conduct a uh, technical working group with regard to the uh, issues on hand. And uh, again, I would like to thank all of you for raising this invitation of uh, the Committee on Labor. And uh, I hope that we will fast track the Eddie Garcia law because I know there are a lot of uh, complaints that have reached my office, reached the offices of our Senators like Senators uh, Robin Padilla, Lito Lapid, and uh, Bong Revilla. So rest assured that we will fast track the, the approval of uh, the Eddie Garcia law. Thank you very much. Session uh, hearing is hereby suspended. <laughs>